I am here vibing with the youngest of the legendary Brownie brothers, a producer, musician, songwriter, and engineer extraordinaire. His parents named him Aldine Brownie, but we know him as Danny BG or Danny Brownie. Father well, Danny, <laughs> bless up, my brother. Great man. Yeah, well, give thanks. It's a joy, man. It's a joy, man. It's a joy. It's a joy. All is well, sir. All is well, man. Well, young mm -hmm. army. Yeah. <laughs> I know you said it, sir. I know you said it, sir. Father, 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 Great man. Yeah. Say all is well, sir. All is well. Yeah, man. All, all is well. It looks it look well. It looks well. It's going to end well. <laughs> it look well. Yeah, man. Talk to us, though. Early life. Mm. Place of birth. I was born in Kingston. Um, my understanding is that I, at the time, my parents were residing at Waltham Avenue. Mm. And, but I didn't know that. Then I grew up in a place called Arlene Gardens. Arlene Gardens. Was, yeah. It was Three Oaks area, close okay. to Primercal, between oh. Primercal and Three Oaks. That I, so that's where I actually grew up. Yes. We know that you are one of five mm -hmm. supremely talented brothers, but how many siblings overall? Well, it's five. It's just a five. Yeah, so man. no sister well, in the lot? No, no sister oh. at all. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you guys had sisters or something. Well, well, we had some other siblings. Well, my father had three um, other. Oh, three, Yeah, prior to yeah, okay. marrying my mom. And then so the five of us grew up together in one house. Oh. The ones you know, the music. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> five boys. Five legendary boys. Yes, I um, I know yeah. that. Dalton passed in 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My condolences. Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. Mommy and daddy still around? Mommy is still around. The old man, is, Chada. Is, yeah, man. Condolences again, yeah, man. man. How is the old lady doing? She's doing very well, you know. Awesome. She's now 96. And she a butt well, man. Doing very, very well. She's not, she's not sick. Nice, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I attribute that to veg She's a vegetarian. Vegetarian. Yeah, man. So. Uh, yeah, man, so I think a lot of it yeah. is attributable to that, you know? Okay. Where did you attend school, though? Uh, well, we started, I started, oh, well, from Primbercal days. Right, okay. I mean, well, Arling Gardens, I went to little, um, elementary school in Arling Gardens. And then I went on to Halfway Tree Primary halfway School. Tree primary. Legendary Halfway Tree Primary. <laughs> Not the one you know. It was, the in it was actually in Halfway Tree. Yeah, man, we saw war with the star youth, them the star boy, they were oh, star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, every minute war broke. So they were legendary <laughs> in the newspaper and, <laughs> <laughs> and TV. That's how it was at GBC. Right. Yeah, man, war, stone war. And, and, and then I transitioned to um, Dunrob in Primary. Right. When the principal moved from Halfway Tree. And okay. Then, and then I landed at Jamaica College. Ah, oh, JC, old yeah, boy. Man. Yes, man. Young boy. <laughs> young boy. <laughs> can't do. You. JC, young boy. Yeah? Yeah, man. Yeah. And, and that was it for formal school? Formal school. school. Yeah, man. Mm. Oh, yes. so for obvious it, reasons. Obvious. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was it like growing up back then, though, from a financial perspective? Uh, from a financial perspective, all right. Well, let me, get the, uh, let me give you this as a sort of um, entry into that. Um, growing up in a family with where most of my cousins, most of my uncles, including my mother, mm -hmm. played an instrument. It was obvious from day one that we'd do music. Right. Um, financially, my father was a, a builder okay. to build houses and so on. Um, but in those days, you know, it was as rough. He worked with government. So okay. If you understand anything about the 70s, you know, going up, it was rough during that period of time. Yeah. So, even though he provided the basic things, you know, we got musical instruments from quite from early. early. Yeah, man. Um, with the influence of my eldest brother, um, Glenn. Glenn, of right. The five. Um, he wanted, he'd asked the father to buy equipment for him and he provided that. Um, it was not always a bed of rules because, you know, he could do what he could do, right. but at least there was provision for that. Right, right. And so the investment in that sort of saw us through. And what an investment it was. It, yeah, man, <laughs> trust me. And it, it was amazing because, you know, Glenn being the eldest, you know, he at the time got introduced to many of the greats mm, in the music industry right. at the time. So, I mean, to, to cut a long story short, the transition from him becoming, because he was over 10 years older than I am. Oh, okay. About 10 years older, yeah. And so when he transitioned into music, 
he was able to help, and then the other brothers and yeah, you and know, then it come down. Everybody come transitioned down. to music, which was a natural thing. Yes, you know. So, so Father Glenn requested instrument from Daddy. Which instrument did you take on to first, though? Okay, so. You know, if you follow, follow, you see yeah, a okay. brother. Okay. I watch me, you know, right. so yeah, yeah, you yeah. do me for me too. Yeah. So he asked my father for a bass guitar, but my father brought a rhythm guitar, okay. a regular six-string guitar. Right. That's not what he wanted. He wanted to play bass. bass. Mm. So my father eventually got a bass guitar. So Dalton got the, 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 bass. the rhythm guitar. The rhythm. Okay, okay. The regular guitar. So of course, me as little, you know, you follow around. So <laughs> made up, start messing guitar. As a matter of fact, I end up playing almost every instrument because everything they, you know, everything drop on me. They end up playing almost yeah, every so instrument. So when they turn them back, me go yep. grab and thing that they will run me and say, come tell me like a pick me mm -hmm. and not be a run round. <laughs> we mess around the thing and so yeah, it ended up that um we ended up playing music through the tradition. My mother actually could play any instrument with a string on it. Oh yeah? Yeah, man. So I said it was in the family church thing, you know. Right. She was the leader of the New Testament church choir from 14 years old. So, you know, and then she taught us how to sing, mm. taught us harmony, the rudiments of music. So we got everything at home, you know, because she could teach the, the whole shebang. And so we just, it was just like destiny for us. Yes. And some people will watch and know it. The, the history of the Brownie brothers, but for mm. the people who, who don't know yet, mm. we're talking about Cleveland Brownie. Yeah, man, from so Steely Great Steely and Cleveland. Cleveland, right? We talk about Noel. Noel. Yeah. Right. We talk about Glenn. Glenn, yeah, man. We're talking Basically. about Dalton, Dalton. Yeah, man. and yeah. Danny. Yes. So we know Cleveland from Steely and Cleveland. Yes. Dalton was around Freddie. Freddie, yeah, Freddy, man. He was his right? musical director. And mm, Glenn was around. Is around Freddie as well? No, I man. Know. Glenn. Well, Glenn was. I think with two was around Freddie. Yeah, man. Well, Glenn transition was. Glenn started in the, the on the North Coast. Oh, okay. The hotel circuit, club circuit. Right. Then he started playing for Jimmy Cliff, then Ziggy Marley, mm. and then Tar. Most recently, Taros. Taros, right. right. Um, Dalton. We said it was our own Freddie. Freddie, yeah, man. And studio musicians. And so right, all of us right, were right. studio musicians. So, yeah, man. So, there are a lot Greatness, of man. It was, yeah, and it all was. the brothers have secured a legacy for themselves. Yes, yeah, so much. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Definitely. Um, we didn't mention Noel. Noel, Teamwork, right. Yeah, he's now overseas. He's living in the UK. Mm. So, and he has charted out, of course. And a lot of the prominent artists today started out with him. With him? Yeah, yeah man. We, Mikey, Mikey Spice and um, Adim Shabba them and some of them guys used to be running from way back in the days. Mm. But the Bro studio was New Name. Yeah, New Name stood. Okay, yeah, man, okay, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. You guys were known as the, the Brownie Bunch? The Brownie Bunch, that was the family group now. This was Jamaica's answer to Jackson 5 because oh. at the time, the Jackson 5 was the, the big thing right. coming out of Motown Records mm -hmm. and the world was looking at Jackson 5. And it just so happens that here are five brothers around the same age doing the same thing. I would sing, we would sing and do harmony. So, in fact, the first song we did were, were introduced to the world as a singing group, singing just like Jackson 5, dressing like them with the afro and yes. the thing, yeah, man. And so we <laughs> recorded a cover version of a song called Good Thing Going. Good Thing Going. Yeah, man, which uh, Sugar Mine had covered it sometime later and it was a hit. But yeah, man, so, so our introduction into the music as professionals who does that, you know, producer Jeffrey Chung mm. and his brother Mikey. So we came in at a higher level because these producers were really prolific. It's not like you know, it was like just investors. These right. people knew what they was doing. And so we learned everything just up by observation. You know, the level of the musicians that played on our first record. We had people like Wild Lindo from Wheelers. We had um, Duval Douglas on bass, Mikey Boo, who replaced. On your first My first track. record, first ever going into a big studio. And these are the guys we were introduced to, Earl Chinna Smith. So, Chinna. so it, yeah, man, it, was, it was a great time for us as kids. Mm -hmm. it, how, old you time, guys, how old were you at I, the I time? I thought it was about nine. And you being the ten. youngest, so okay. So, yeah, so my observation, I was just in awe, mm -hmm. you know. You can we didn't have a clue what was the first time seeing inside a recording studio. I went in there, we delivered, and the songs, well, quite a few songs came out, did relatively well. Yes. In, this, in the UK, not mm, Jamaica. Not in Jamaica. So 
Um, even though we had a little stint, we did some um, TVG appearances as a youth. I'd love to fight. Anybody can fight that footage. Just those recordings. Because we were, yeah, man, remember several times on TVG and we did one or two live shows. Suppose JBC it was at the time. JBC, yes. <laughs> yeah, man. So the, Bra um, the Brownie Bunch, how, how long did you guys stick together as, as a group back mm -hmm. then before each person started? chanting oh. their own course well here so this is where i said the, the financial support came because when we are growing up um you know as i said there were difficult times in the 70s oh, early okay. 70s um governmental issues and you know it got jamaica it was like a war zone mm. and so things were difficult my father sometimes wouldn't even turn up because he'd be out in the country doing work Working. and there are days where he wouldn't turn but anyway as as I said, with the age difference, right? You know, like for instance, Glenn got married at age. I think he was nineteen when he got married. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that means uh, that means I would have been what ten, yes, nine, yes, ten. nine, ten. Yeah. So he was able to lend support to the family mm. and them things. Eh? So he had to work. So I knew at one stage I was doing some salesman work until him start playing a band. Oh, okay. Every time Glenn would transition, like he would. Um, enter into the music industry while, like for instance, Dalton went to JC also. Oh, okay. He was the next one. Mm -hmm. So, right after that, Dalton finished school at JC and he transitioned into music. Then there was Noel finished school. Well, he went to, he went to college for a minute. Oh, okay. Um, because he wasn't pursuing music as much as, as we you, were. Okay. Yeah, he was more, in, he was very, very bright youth, you know. But um, so he transitioned, and then Cleve, the same thing, left mm. Excel. So I transitioned into music. So it was it was just the same for all of us. So you find that um, we we um, during that time we were doing the brownie bunch, but we were doing school at the same okay, time. Okay, okay, okay. And then you know. Oh, we're well, sorry for any school further than man. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, man, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of story because yeah. I mean, just the other school band. I was in the part of school band. As a matter of fact. I am probably one of the first one of the persons in school play for almost every school band in Jamaica. Because I don't know if it was a shot with a guitarist. Oh. But you know, so TC wanted a guitarist to play something. You go around there. And so we meet like Paul Blake, yeah. which way oh, right, the blood, right. blood, blood fire fire Yeah. Oh, so okay. then and then um Woolmas needed a guitarist for something that's me again. Calabar, same thing. So you start round, you start to get familiar with mm. some of the young musicians coming up in that period of time. But as I was saying, you know, because Glenn had responsibilities he had, as a married man. Right. You know, he had to be taking care of that while we were in school. So the group never had the time to gel as much as we needed to. Mm -hmm. But then by the time it came around to me, for instance, everybody was already in some band playing somewhere. So Brown, the bunch as a group, never had the opportunities. So we never, we didn't stick to it. Right. And everybody was successful. So by the time I leave school, everybody's successful already. So it was my time and he to be successful. End up with, he ended up with a blood fire pass. Right. So, yeah. so, so <laughs> I, you, remember, you mentioned Paul and mm. you said you met Paul. He was at Casey. Casey, yeah, man. Right. So you knew him from early out From then. early out, man. So yeah. how did the blood fire pass then? And, and I remember hearing the name for the first time. I said, then what kind of gang name is there? <laughs> <laughs> so how, how did the blood fire pass for, come together though? Like what was the genesis of, of all of that? Okay, so it's a, a long story, but mm -hmm. I'm going to cut that short as well. <laughs> yeah, man. Right. All of us, just like I was saying, through school, we met one, an, you know, one, one another along the way. And so you find that we would identify the superior talents. Mm. We were drawn to each other. So, you know, a man said, boy, I drum at the body. Right, right. Yes, mark him face and say, him, yeah, man. So over time, we played in different bands. Because, for instance, I started playing a my first band was the Mighty Titans. The Mighty Titans? Yeah, man. If you ever hear about a band. Yes, man. I've heard about the Titans. Yeah, man. Right. So, them band, you know, you heard the key with them band, you know. Mighty Titans was the resident band at a club called Bohemia, Bohemia. Night Club. Mm -hmm. We would do talent shows in the nights. People would come in. So, we were exposed to all forms of music. So, we started developing talent right. from there. You know, um, so, like at Bohemia, now I met um, Carl Eaton. Carl Eaton. Who was the drummer for Bloodfire? Ended up right. being the drummer at Bloodfire. Um, then there was um, um, Sagittarius. 
That did factor if you were Sagittarius with Derek Barron right. and them thing. We're back in Barron for Yellow Man back in the day. Thing that I tra transitioned to, to. You. Yeah, man. Became a part of Sagittarius. Yeah, man. I was a. Well, from way back when, man. Oh, yeah. Sagittarius. Yeah, man. <laughs> So that time the dance hall things that broke out now, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. the blood the blood um at Sagittarius. Right. Then I went and started to play for um a band called One One Vibe. One it was vibe. Freddie McGregor's back Freddie. in band. Okay. So it's the first time I was going on tour. Uh, and and not to break you, what what were you playing in Sagittarius? Oh guitarist Just man. Guitar. Yeah man, yeah oh, okay. man. So I'm, so a, you know, you're I'm a all trade instrument. Right. I'm a if you ask me what instrument I play, I'm guitarist. a guitarist. Yeah, man, I can represent on guitar, mm. function on keyboard, but I'm a guitarist. Guitar. Okay, nice. So, yeah, man, so all these bands I'm talking about as, as a guitarist. So, along the way, we meet meet up back again as mm. more people from right, school. Right, right, right. Keyboard player, Alden Stewart from KC. You know? Alden passed a thing. Yeah, Alden passed that too. Carl also. Carl also, from, okay. Yeah, he was from Calabar. Oh. And, of course, Paul, and then there's Benji now. Benji. Um, who now still play for um, Rough Cut. Rough, okay, Rough yes, 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 yeah, yes, so, yes. So all of us grew up in that kind of that environment, school age. So it was Meadowbrook, you know, mm -hmm. it was Meadowbrook. And so, yeah, man, so that was the sort of um, the catalyst that brought the whole blood fire thing together. So as we grew, you know, we identified, you know, I went on tour with Freddie McGregor, for instance, 1981, my first tour. And we had to tour North America. When he got back, you know, I became um, the same band that would back Freddie, back to Judy Mott. Oh, right? he became band, yeah. band So leader. when Bob Marley died, <laughs> this is another story, you know. So when Bob Marley died now, the I3s right. got a contract with a record company, a guy named Tom Bell, who was one of the most prolific songwriters of all time. Tom Bell? The, yeah, man. The Jamaican? So, no, man. Foreign Part, thing, oh, man. Okay, yeah, okay. man. Foreign thing. So he came to Jamaica to do a recording with, with I3s. Mm -hmm. I3s. When they were doing the rehearsals, I was the guitarist, kind of helping them, working through them harmonies and them thing. They were a youth, you know. <laughs> they were a youth, you know. They were a youth, you know. They were a youth, And I remember, Judy Mott bought this little machine. A little machine. Mm -hmm. First, me asked this thing, you know. So it's a machine I can program. You know, let me give you a background. You had a thing called rhythm box. Rhythm box. The preset, so you could because I'm pressing your beat and you no know, next one. Hey, press a beat. This one you could actually program, program it. what you wanted. Yeah, them things that never existed in Jamaica at the time. So me mess with this machine I realized, I said, whoa, your yeah, beat that is so wicked. So anyway, <laughs> so every time we get a little break, we go mess with the machine. Uh, and one day Master gave his story, I said, Danny, that sound goody. And the same I feel like <laughs> <laughs> life start over. <laughs> Let me rebound the fresh. Yeah, that, that's so good. So that beat that I programmed was the beat that we used to start the first, the, to record the first Bloodfire song. So that's, the, that's what I'm going to give you. This Robert Blood Soldier? Fire. Yeah, man. So this is how it start now. Uh, so I'm be a program this beat and we can have not, I think about none, Paul, long out of my yard and them things. And, you know, time, no one them up on campus. So people thought we were, you were students. Right. Because we were always on campus. Alden was on campus. He lived at Taylor Hall. Oh, okay. So we were up there all the time. And um, remember one time them called to come to some concert. That time, me have this beat, you know, make you and stash it over there. And call them and put a band together. And would have come up to you and man say, what the band name? No, me. I, 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 I don't want. If he says me, say Bloodfire. Right. We'll say, because something we used to say. Oh, you know, Bloodfire. Like, say, yeah, because we don't curse bad right, so right. we say Bloodfire. Blood <laughs> so, anyway, so the, the, the thing gone, Bloodfire thing start now, and probably he sang out of my house half of the time. And he come with this song, Robert Up Soldier. Robert Up Soldier. Sing, sing the idea to me. I mean, I see, that song like this could be to me make it so <laughs> so so we have to show your music sometimes buck yeah, up you know. Yeah, man. So it was like part of the 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 the, the um the the the, the, the start in of Bloodfire Passive. That that song that he came with, it was right. So we sort out sort the out lyrics out, and organize and organize and mm. So it was the first time so I'm gonna produce a song for the first time in my that life. That was the first production. The first production. 1984. 80, 80, no man, 83. 80, it was done. Released in 84, but it was for 83. So them times that we don't really have no we don't have no foundation in it, you know. So I have a bridge with a tape. 
Jag bara sa att jag spelar på en sång som jag säger att jag har bägge bara spis på en typ. Bägge bara spis på en typ. Jag har bägge bara spis på en typ. Jag har bägge bara spis på en typ. Så jag har bägge bara spis på en typ. Jag har bägge bara spis på en typ. Och så kan man ju ha en typ på en typ. Jag har bägge bara spis på en studie från min bridge. Men om du vet en studie på Mountain View Avenue. Vad är det för att jag har bägge bara spis på en typ? Ja, men de har bägge bara spis på en typ. Originally Mikey Carroll, yeah. it was his studio. Anyway, so we record, that time him just set up his studio, borrow some equipment there for one bridge in discotheque. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some reverb and everything, and can't go hook up. The drum machine was just a one output machine. We borrow a keyboard from Boris Gardner, just one bag of mix up. Go in the studio and lick this record, you know. As a matter of fact, the introduction to Robert of Soldier, if you know it, it started with some marching drums. Right. That was Cleavy. Oh, yeah, man, so whenever him have Carl, Carl was in there at the time. So, so, so he said, Cleave played the thing, yeah, man, Cleave played the matching. So he just heard the thing I made him say, this is what I wanted, and put in the siren, boom, boom, boom. Not thinking that this thing, we just have fun. Your studio, come in and squeeze, That's DJ squeeze. So DJ Mixed squeeze, in. come with them. We have you know, so the end of the song, you have some scratching. Correct it, right, that time, right. I hear we about scratching and firing, you know. So, yeah, yeah, squeeze. Yeah, man, squeeze. Come in and make a whoosu, whoosu, whoosu. With his own hip, you know? The third in America. Anyway, so we draw, drop the song. And a squeeze introduced to some people, a dynamic sounds, and, you know? Oh, dynamic did it. So here, I really go down you now. So this was Alberta Blood Fair, you know? Barry G and, and um, um, David Radigan yeah, had a David. clash. Oh. A sound clash, them days they went sound clash, you know, a real, real thing. Real thing, yeah. The whole Jamaica was about it. So it was Cinema 2, that was, at, you know, Cinema right, 2, yeah, New Kingston. And Barry G draw the song, you know, links, links, right, so you right. get it to Barry G. And Barry G draw the song from David Radigan and stop the night. The place mash up, because they were not like this before, because this song very mechanical. It sounded, right, right. it was not a live drum. You know, oh, okay. um, it, you know, back in them days, the roots music, I play everything slow. That went a little bit faster, everything mm, else. A bit more up tempo. And it's so, yeah, man, up tempo and the drum machine sound was unusual to hear something like that. I play a reggae song, a dance song. So when that <laughs> boss, never had to go back to England with it, and that uh, history. That was it. The song went number one everywhere in the world. Because everywhere in the world. Everywhere in the world, we have a reggae chart, we're number one. Just sort of experimenting and having fun. Having fun, yeah, that's why it starts. So, it's, yeah, claim, like I say, with the silver and play. Buck up. Buck up, you know. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Most of the, I want to tell you, I'll defend it. Most hit songs out of Jamaica, buck, buck up, you know. Nobody, nobody does plan nothing. Like that, right? yeah. Just do a thing and it work out. So, Robert Dove Soldier was the introduction. Introduction. Bloodfire got to the world. To the world, yeah, man. And you were the producer. I, I was a producer after record. Yeah, man. The first go. First go. First <laughs> time I attempt to produce a song. I mean, I tell you, like, no by quality standards. Mm -hmm. we, it wasn't right. It wasn't right, all right. that, but at the time, based on the quality standard at the time, it right. sounded different. I want to say it sounded bigger, but, you it, know, but it, just, it was just a different I appreciate song. the humility of that. Yeah, man. It sounds fun. <laughs> this song, so I sang the world, and right after that, we, we did um, the flat. Pink Panther. Oh, the Pink Panther in, um, instrumental the type thing. Yeah, man. And then time start look up now, and we start feel more confident. And immediately we got a recording contract. So I we see, Sony. Sony. It was um, um, the label was actually CBS. CBS, not RCA. CBS. So CBS Sony. Yeah. Yes, yes. True, true, true. Yeah, man. And so we got a good run in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, got accolades, sung in the British pop chart, all them things there. Um, Bloodfire did very well. We were recognizable on the streets in the UK. We couldn't take public transport anymore. We had to be. Star business. Star business start, man. And, and that's how things start, man. Ego starts stretch out. Huh? <laughs> because it does go in the territory, you know? Yeah. Because youthful exuberance. Before you know? we get to the part, <laughs> You guys did one another legendary song from them, Get Flat. Yeah, man, if you pass you get produce flat. Yes, man. again. Yeah, man. <laughs> a, a legendary song that I said, I'm This song, let me tell you, man. That's why, that's why I put a deal. That's what I'm saying, you know, so, 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 Get Flat led to the deal with CBS. Yeah, man, that's, the whole thing, the, the whole, whole transition thing. from the Rubber Dub Soldier. So, it's three songs. Made that determination. So the Robert Dub Soldier, the Ping Pong thing, and, and Get the, Flat. And it sounded like it was never going to end. So mm. 
immediately. So we went up to the UK on tour. It was a sun splash. I remember right. it was sun splash. Went to the UK and we were on that tour. So it had Black Uhuru, all the greats at the time. The Heineke Mosey, everybody would bust out them times, you know. It was there. And we went on there and they, they took note of us. And we were called in to do an audition. It was the hardest thing we ever do in life. Yeah. Go in a room with about six white men. <laughs> and we do a show for them. For six people, right? Right, there, so. yes, sir. Yeah, man, just put on a show. Yeah, you say, yeah, everything. And we had signed immediately. So they, they saw a future in that, you know? Yes. And then Are You Ready was another song from the Are Blood Passion that did very well. Yeah, man, that was the title track from for, the for first the album. album. Yeah, man, so the first album. How many albums was the deal with, with, with CBS? <laughs> right, that, one is a tough. that was a, a regular deal. It's I a mean, regular you'd, deal. Yeah, so oh, you'd, have, okay. you'd have options for nine years or nine? something like that. Oh, but yeah? No, 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 no. You understand? You know, every, every artist who claim that they get robbed, you know. It's just one of them things there. <laughs> you don't know them days, we don't know nothing at all. Never even know about publishing. We say, we're going to still have fun and come out with this. And so everything, <laughs> everything just happened. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, so uh, at the time, we, the biggest opportunities we got was to tour the world. We tour were able world. to tour Europe. Um, we went and toured UB40, for instance, oh, yeah. the UK. We did some major venues and got that level of exposure. And Robert up, no Robert up soldier. Every pass get flat, re enter the UK chart on the back of that tour. Right. We were doing very well, you know, and got that opportunity. And um, so that came to an end, kind of rather abruptly. Because you mean the blood, the fire, blood fire pass? Oh, yeah, okay. The, yeah, man, the deal and everything. Because there are a couple of things at the yes, time. The ego starts stretching. Ego starts stretching. And part of the thing is, for instance, when we were making the um, Every Pass to Get Flat video in, oh, over there in the UK, they wanted us to put steel pan in it and them things. And we no, 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 for we think that. So, same thing. So we start to have little issues with them now. So we start to feel like... So creative differences yeah, man, we became, right now. A, became a, a part of the thing. And little money start mixing, so you know, and them just start to... You know, <laughs> so, so we had to, yeah, we had to say, listen, man, we, we want to be in charge of this thing. And then the other thing they wanted to extend the term of the, the, contract. the contract at the time. You know, and we felt like, no, but we've been doing these songs from, we know them songs are from 19 how long. Right. You know, you get, you just use them. We need creatively, you know, to go on and start going to studio and start the songs. And they said, no, they're not ready for that. We need to work this album. So we a creative difference. And then again, the ego of the man, the man, you know. Because I think Paul was the first to leave. Yes. That, that's, <laughs> I will go back in there, sir. But, <laughs> no, um, you know, literally, I'll go back in there. I mean, it was, I mean, he, well, I want to tell you, about four or five years ago he came to me and he, he apologized because at the time, we asked him to leave. Oh. Because, you know, I, again, I say, we all understand as youth, you success drop on you like that and, you know, we're driving all over London in these fancy cars, you know, the, the, the Rolls Royce to pick up us in the morning, some, you know, you show for come out and we we'll live in a place named Hyde Park Mansion. You know, Hyde Park Mansion is a way called West End, yes. so near the Queen Elizabeth Palace. So we are living lavish. Yeah, I live lavish, man. So we overdo it, but, <laughs> but as you tell us, you know, right, Paul, right. Paul, as the front man, no, mm -hmm. you know, it comes, right. they get most recognition. And Paul really are do it, overdo it. And he wouldn't even contact the talking at mm. the time. So we started to have issues. And it just, one day it just exploded, you know, just all out brawl until we just say, you know, this not going work. Call it quits, we need. You, you are yeah, responsible for most of the productions for Blood Fire Fossil. I was the producer of the group. Straight through. Yeah, man, that's what I learned production because, I, again, you remember, that's established my foundation and I observed what the, these guys were doing. I couldn't afford it. But when we, after we did Robert Up Soldier, then we went on. By the time we reached every pass to get flat, we in a big studio. As a matter of fact, we went overseas and reproduced the songs Robert, overseas. Robert Up Soldier and, and every pass to get flat. Now. Yeah, man, so the song. It was a little faster than the original one mm -hmm. for the UK market right, right. and all that and video and all of that. So we had, were on our way, you know. So as a producer now, I did started I started producing UK groups. Miss 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 Brown Mrs. Brown and last boy on Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember I tell you the truth, you know. I remember we were on Reggae Sun Splash tour. That time no book up after Bob Marley died, no book up Wheelers on the road, we book up Gregory Isaacs, all the way on the same Toots and the Metals, Third World, 
grand big tour. And one day, it's the first thing ever happened to me. I remember being on the bus and we in Belgium. But as a cute, I used to save stamps. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the only place me know about them things is from stamps. Mm. You know? So it's medical hobby. I'm just, oh, they said, well, I'm made up on the bus. I'm just get up on the bus and say, well, I'm there. I really build you up with it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just hit you. Click it out. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it right. tapped me so fast, then, you know, get the time to absorb it. it. And yeah. Mm. So, what just occurred to me, well, I'm man, I really build you up with it. No, man. <laughs> I remember when I look at the side of the I was like, I'm going to look at the face. This is cute. Yes, yes. But, you know, it really hit me that day. And that was it. That was it for me, though, mm. after seeing that. And going through, you know, seeing Paris and Rome and going to all these places. It was like a dream come through. I didn't take any pictures. That's the problem. <laughs> it's a brownie thing. It it's, a, time, it's a brownie thing, man. Yeah. We, don't have no, we don't do pictures. We don't, you know, a lot of things that normal people do. Mm. You know, so just a few snaps here and there from other people mainly. Yes. But um, yeah, man, so it was exciting times for us, you know. And then, so at that time, I realized, you know, music production is a thing I really want to pursue. When I see the foreign them start asking me to produce songs for them, and so I wanted to become a producer. So, I've, you know, and the transition again. Transition again. Yeah, man. And, and the Blood Fire Posse kind of unraveled about 93. In about 90, let me see, let me get it together now. Yeah, about 93, man. Um, in, other, in other time there. Yes, you're correct, you know. You're right. Because we changed, Paul, we uh, transitioned to um, Scatter. To Scatter. Scatter became the lead singer. Trevor Bannick. Right. Who, he's now the lead singer for um, Inner Circle. Oh, yeah? Yeah, man. So he replaced Paul. So we started them sounding like Can't Stop Rocking Tonight and um, Rude Boys in Town. Right. You know, and that was another interesting time because we started to build a, almost like a cult following in Jamaica. Because, of course, UA was right, bass. Right, right. the place UA, that. Yeah, man. So we had the UA bass and, you know, it was trending very well. Um, but during that period of time, there was no r real commitment to the group because, because of the breakup. Bloodfire never broke up in it. Not that the group broke up in it. Right. But then we had the, we lost the, the, the keyboard player, Trapper. Tra right. He died in the midst of all that was going on, the drama. And then the drummer died. So we had replacements. You know, so Lenky replaced Trapper and keyboard. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. And, and thing they replaced. Um, as I said, Scatter replaced Skatter, Paul right. as as lead singer, yeah, and then the um, the drummer now actually we ended up Cleavy. Cleave, oh, so Cleave, yeah. Cause he was original Blood Fair. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, so yeah, man, so it was so the one or two shows with the Cleavy just played, mm. and he said it was interesting times. So it's interesting, so yeah, it's fun. Yeah, man, yeah, man. People <laughs> would know them things, you know. Yeah, because people don't know Cleave as a live that live drummer, but Cleavy was from studio one, you know. Okay. So I guess when we talk to me, yeah, man, you get, get out of all of that. <laughs> yeah, man. So after Blood Fire passing on, you still had the desire, or even a greater desire now to do production. Right. So, yeah, so that's another, another area that I'm going to walk again. We're um, doing Blood Fire time, when Blood Fire um, kind of fell apart. Right. I, I was very frustrated at the time. So I started during that late, latter part of the, no, the early 90s, no, late 80s, the 90s, when the transition took place. Mm -hmm. As a musician, now I started to do a lot of recording. You know, as a guitarist, I was a whole possession. So I used to tour with Sly and Robbie. I toured with Steely and Cleavy, and I played on most of their recordings. You Ste played on most of Steely and Cleavy yeah, recordings? Man. Yeah, as a guitarist. As a guitarist. Yeah. So what was happening at the time, Steely and Cleavy, apart from Jammies, Jammies never used guitar. Right. But every other, you know, the, the Riley and um, Donovan Jeremy and, and everybody else. I was the guitarist on those sessions. So I started to get exposure as a guitarist. Mm -hmm. But out of the frustration of Bloodfire now, because, all right, let me tell you something. It's a bass. Bass is my favorite instrument. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But my brother is a bass player, so I never played bass. That's you know, I, Glenn. Glenn. Yeah, because Glenn played bass. I stayed away from bass. But bass, when it comes to like, blood fire songs, mm -hmm. I made up all the bass lines. Oh. You know? I'm into bass. I just make bass lines. So during that period of time, you know, we are dead as musicians. You know? I played guitar for the session, then we were fresh and we were a song was coming out at the time, 90s. One day, Steely didn't show up at a session at Channel One. And 
the producer said, boy, I have to do this session, I have to go on. So I had a little Casio in the back of my car. And Cleve said, Daddy, go get the Casio. I said, sure, I never play keyboard for the session. Yet, you know? Yeah. We are guitars, we call me guitar. Yeah, we go for it. And the, you know, set up and said, do that thing. It's the first song we play for now. We play keyboard now. Bass line, keyboard, bass line, everything. Which was, a, was a song named Kingston 13, Kingston Pinchers. 30. I think I send them, send them butter. Come we go. I think I send them, you know, yeah. yeah, man, and this song down the place. And you the, played keys on it and keys guitar. And, yeah, man. Rhythm. Play rhythm everything. Yeah, man, all the instruments. Cleaver played the drum. Cleaver right. programming drum, but I played the bass and the thing there. And the song shot and the producer said, wow. So it's like a bus that go on now. Mm. Next song we play you now is the song, Every day I love you just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, man. Putum, putum, putum. Guitar phrase, pum, 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 pum. And guitar is like, putum, pum. <laughs> but it's a keyboard that I play upon. So it's like, again, second song we play upon. Run away Shut again. again. Then here comes the big bad rumors, them spreading. Say nothing. Everybody starts to hold on the youth here. You know? So that was the birth of this. And it yeah. came out of frustration because all of those rhythms are like blood fire rhythms. So you listen to them carefully. Because right. that was my thing. Them rugged bass line. My bass line was different from Steely. Steely play high up on the thing and bounce. My own is deep and sound. Serious and vex. <laughs> <laughs> so my, that's how I read them so much. Yeah. Like, you know, vex with somebody. So that started birth me now into becoming a musician of note. That producer started to call me now. So I ended up playing and who up a big song as well, who up a budget band, um, walk like a champion, um, wanna be loved. You know, a lot of songs I start playing. You and know. you're on, yeah, walk man. like a champion, wanna be loved. Yeah, man, um, movie star. Movie now, who star. Up a, yeah, man, trust me, we can't be the half of the song, don't remember. <laughs> I used them days when we start playing with him. Jammy star come when Bounty Killer bust out with songs like um, um, Not Another Word from not the Commissioner. Not Another Word. Yeah. Them, yeah, man, so that's just my thing, transition now into becoming a keyboard player. So people start coming you know, out and we have give them the bass lines and things. And you, that started, to, you know, to miss a love of man and them songs, they start dropping, do a Gussie Clark era. Right. When everything him touched now start to seal. That so, came so, out of my frustration right, again. The blood fire soul. Right. Uh, so the kind of bass line. You 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 became a session player for, for music works? Yeah man. So that was before Blood are, are doing Blood Fire. It was during the it was right at the tail end. Oh so between because Blood Fire and Main Street. In other region. Main Street don't come yet, man. Main Street don't come yet. No, no I mean, I said between. It yeah, was yeah, between. Yeah. Between yeah. that. Right. So that was the yeah. And so doing that now, I got so prominent that, you know, um, Steel and Cleave, when they do production overseas, they start to work with a lot of foreign producers and, and artists. I was the tra I was the trap with them, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, I remember it was like we were like super successful. Everything was going right. Every song would touch became Work. something. Yeah, man. Those things. And that whole transition now to going to take you out into Main Street. Right. Was Luton and Stitchy got a deal with Atlantic Records. Mm -hmm. And Stitchy called me and said, Yeah, I want some producer producing yes. project for him. And so Cleavy and myself ended up producing his first couple albums for Atlantic Records. And during that time also Steely, I mean Steely has had gone overseas for like a minute. Mm -hmm. So it was just me and Cleavy. So a lot of songs oh, were yes, coming yes, out. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, man. A lot of songs coming from people, some persons knew that it was me and Cleve <laughs> doing all these sessions. So I was, you know. So right. No, because <laughs> it's important. So when Steel go for and go for um, Steel Plate and I do some work and mm. them. Well, you know about you, it. <laughs> and you and Cleve, yeah, how man. many things happen around yeah, here? Yeah, man. Because people just say Cleve, but yeah. now we know that Danny was there. Yeah, man. I've always been there, man. I've always been there. And Steel, and me and Steel, me and Steel are good enough. Both yes, of the fine. You feel the way. And what the fuck him celebrate me because, you know? Whole a family was, too. Yeah, man. Because I'm from. Well, that's another story. Yeah. Because we always say Steel is there foreign and, and, and Danny make it thing, a, 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 a Cleave make it thing a work. Mm -hmm. But. Okay, yeah. so you yeah, see, man. I learned, I learned it apart. Yeah, yeah, I teach you, I teach you. I teach you, I teach you, man. I learned it in the process. <laughs> yeah, man. So that was a, a, a big time in, in the industry where, you know, started to like strive with, um, I remember Cleaver, I did strive with, um, when did China? Ch yeah, yeah, man. Enough people don't know, send me a Cleaver play all them songs there. 
you know, um, during that time, yeah, to be poor is a crime, she Freddie McGregor, Freddie McGregor album with him. Um, as a matter of fact, me alone play most of them songs. Oh, yeah? Um, the, the, when the, the, the covers them. Mm, yeah, I don't, yeah, know, so I don't know the name of the album, I fight for my head. Yeah, man. But those set of songs, they do, to be poor is a crime and certain songs. Was, um, so during that period of time, now, as I said, Steel, uh, not Steel, Stitchy said to me, Danny, why you don't start a label? And I said, you know, some oh. interesting uh, label thing, you know. Because I see how the artist, the producer, the artist, yes. adds. And we just never like that thing. I don't mm. like the business of the music. We just want to play and go, me, or the PM, me, go. I got over. And Steel said, no, man, you start it, start it thing, man, Stitchy. Stitchy. Say, you know, yeah. Start it thing, man. And he encouraged me, encouraged me until one day I was giving. And I said, you know, I'm, I try thing, you know. I don't know how I come up with the name, Main Street. I just kind of name and bring general degree. used to hang out at Nixon Lab. And you also there pass right, a year right. in, in Maluka Bus. And right, one day I was carrying for the studio. I have a little, little, little set of used cars, one at a time. A little, a little studio. <laughs> Small, one, one at, at a time. time. Seriously, yeah, one, one, one at a time. And boom, make a song named Granny. Granny. So again, first time now doing production as Main Street. Boom, the song. Fly away. Number one straight. Everybody wanted to win the song come from. Matter of fact, most people, everybody thought it was me, DJ. Oh, yeah? Because I used to keep love, keep up arms, though. So, oh. And we <laughs> couldn't convince the people. I said, no, it's like you name General okay, Degree. Degree. I said, that you're too lie. Are you that know your voice? <laughs> I said, no, it's not me. And you know, tell me and Degree Farm such a great band that everything would touch just work. Go well, man. Yeah, man, some Degree and I know start this thing and that fly. Then gone, it's it now. Oh, me, oh, my. Oh, me, oh, my. Right, let's see him look at room again, uh, one at a time. time. <laughs> in front of a tile, they have two voices in front of you. So, me over here, so I go room with a tile. It. I go out, and he just go in there, put up the mic, put a screen, you don't see the tile. You don't see the screen and the mic. Uh, and them sound the voice right there, so. Papa son, um, strange things are happening. Strange. Yeah, man. Maddy, maddy cry. cry. Yeah, man, right there, so in the little room. So things just start. I will survive. Are you aware of that too? No. No. Um, hold on. Who sang? We know money, money, cry are yours. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. Um, hippity, hippity, yeah. Uh, don't have, uh, we... <laughs> we Father well, just... Danny, before I go any further, I came here knowing that Danny Brownie is a great man. What I kind of discover is Danny Brownie far greater than what we think, brother. <laughs> I give thanks to him. <laughs> no, but I'm serious, no. Yeah? You because, as we say, a lot of, a lot of this stuff you are telling me you know, in the literature out there. You know? no, so, no. I discover some stuff, you know, yeah, brother. Yeah, and yeah. I agree this, we are discover. <laughs> uh, you say, oh, me, oh, my, was voice. Beside, I want to tile it. Inside, yeah, man, right there, tile it, man. <laughs> tile it. It's just that he couldn't see it. He couldn't <laughs> see it. it. I probably bought it out. But, yeah, man, right in the middle room, man, at a time. So, man. And, and, and it was off the Radio Zero location oh. at the time? Okay. That's where it started? No, it, well, the same is right in front of where Main Street was oh, established. Okay, okay, okay. So it was over my mother's house, oh. right in front of Main Street. So, there's like a back room, then you know, Right, she, okay. She, she allow me to use the back room and just do a thing, set up like a thing. And I think, but even that, I mean, the story behind that, thing, and this is a list of many because. When I, my first tour I went on, I bought this little cassette. It's them days, those cassettes. Right. Four track cassette where you could record uh, four tracks. Because you know, cassette is stereo. Right. right? But the, 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 this deck where I bought run one direction. So you could record on each one of them individually. Oh. A little cheap machine, you know. I'm going to put out songs before Main Street or anything, you know. Right. So we could song with someone, come on, and we, we used to do advertisement and all them things. People don't even know all them something. No, you do ads now, but we never know. You used to do ads yeah, then. Yeah, man, them days are running that thing, man. We're talking about it. With your voice or your record? No, people me and the people. Me and the people. Me and the people. Me and the transition to my voice. Yeah. Yeah. It's just people thing, you know. But we used to write some kind of dragon stout and some, some things and and so them times uh, so I started to learn how to manage those sort of things now because it's not like a little mini studio. Right. And so we transition from that, we buy a bigger cassette deck, same thing you know, but a bigger, bigger one. one. And we go here say progress one. Yeah man. Can remember at the time we hear say um, um Collins. When you were in uh, Phil Collins. Phil Collins. Oh, okay. a big song. Remember that big song we say is it him record and so we say, eh? <laughs> 
say you know so confidence we up now yeah, you can do it so too. so transition to the main street thing you know so that's 1992 92 right is when i started main street main street, main street of well main street started in 92 92 that's what and that was in, at the tail end of the, the blood fire yes journey right yes. there so yeah. and the first artist you recorded for main street is a great general degree general degree yeah man and um and of course you know, over over my journey, I would have met a lot of artists there, Flo Agan and them guys, because they're playing most of their recordings. Yes, because so. on um, re, a rerun things, you you you, yeah, you are on that. Yeah, man. So it, so it's that Red Dragon, and they, you know, their brothers. Right, so yeah, man. They tell them have all of Fresh and them fresh. songs there. Um, and you depend on that. Them things at all. Them songs them play guitar. So we have to say the whole thing, you know, guitar we play for them. Yeah, so play guitar we play keyboard or whatever. Yeah, part. man. So <laughs> consistently, you know, being there. And I and I must swear there to him I'm Sly and Robbie because during that time, leading up to that Robbie Shakespeare and I started a label called Powermatic. Powermatic label? Yes. That was Robbie Between Shakespeare. Me and Robbie. Me and Robbie Shakespeare. Mr. Power Matty, but I don't know how you drop in. Yeah, that kind of. Yeah. Uh, right. That was uh, almost like a precursor to Main Street because that was right in this uh, transition took place. Uh -huh. I started with Rabbi, so, so yeah, Rabbi first. Power Matty, mm -hmm. then into Main Street. Yes, yes. Did you, or did, did you or do you have a label by the name of Juvenile? Yes. Still? It's my label. It's your label. Yeah, man. So juvenile label that's that, that later down the mid mid nineties. Mid nineties, okay. Yeah. So juvenile kind of ran parallel with Main Street at that time. Yes, but juvenile was um, the first. The, oh, well, I don't say it's only, but one of the songs that came out on juvenile was Heads High. Mr. Vega. Yeah, yeah, came out on juvenile in Jamaica. Overseas came out on Main Street. Oh. So that was just a, a Jamaican thing. Yeah, before we reach out on that side, it's still. So, Main Street, you know, we say mm. you started out with, with Degree, but then you started adding who came next? Buccaneer? After Degree, to the, in terms of the camp, yes. Junior Tucker. Oh, Tucker came. So we had songs there, okay. do you think I'm sexy and them thing, and run, yeah, run with them. Um, Daddy Lizard. Daddy, yes, yes. Oh, Ron Gallo, Daddy Lizard. Yes, yeah, yes, man. yes. And Flo Agan, the whole time, oh, and Red Dragon. Yeah, so that became, nah, that, became cool. the, the, yes. that became the origins of Main Street with um, Anthony Red Rose and everything. So, all right, so Degree, mm -hmm. Flo Agan, yeah. Red Dragon, Red Dragon, Anthony Red Rose. Yeah. Daddy Lizard. Lizard, right. Yeah. And Junior, I said Tucker, Junior, Junior Tucker. Tucker, yeah. So, so that was the, the early core of Main Street. Yeah, man. And Gandhi still kind of in there in a sense, but him, yeah, he, he was still a Cleveland artist. So, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, bar him, the bar him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, man. And then now, uh, and you got all of hit songs out of that. We, we talk about fresh mm -hmm. and we run things and all that. Mm -hmm. No, we run things off here. Still and creepy, but you played on that. Yeah, man. That, this was their production, you know. We, it was, it was, it was um, Redman. Redman. So oh, Redman International. International. Yeah, man. So that's how this, as I say, it's a whole proper producer. Whole thing. At the ah. time, we were playing for everybody. everybody. Any producer who, had, who wanted to do dance, it was a steely and cleavy thing, mainly. I said 90% of the songs then. Mm. So I played on all those. And on the other side, I was playing with Sly and Robbie and their recordings also. So it's like, I was just there. Them say I'm the hand. The hand in, in Celia <laughs> and Cleavy. Uh, yeah. So at for a minute, that was the, the whole Martin, thing. Martin. Yeah. yeah, man. You created one of the, the greatest musical collective in the history of the thing. We have more shocking mm. vibes mm. and on Main Street, one of the legendary camps in the thing. Yeah, that, that, all right. Let me tell you, the Main Street thing was somewhat deliberate in a sense, the way I approached the whole Main Street thing. Um, in that dance hall at the time, to me, it, it, it peaked. It's like, oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, man, it peaked. And I felt like I wanted to go somewhere else with it. Mm. So, whereas most of the camps, them, everybody has seen about, you know. Some model spent or shocking vibes. Yeah, man. Works. So, if a bad man lyrics was coming out, everybody coasted us. When Bounty come out, everybody wanted to turn Bounty and them things there. But me, I'm a very jovial person, you know? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to represent me. Mm. So with the Main Street thing, we found us that Main Street was a... We wanted, I wanted my music to be different. I remember I said to the guys, you know, everybody I played, doom, doom, cut, 
doom, doom, doom. Say, but no one do that, more stand out. And it's outstanding in what I am doing. So I start to make different types of beats. You know, what I found for, for my music, for instance, that a lot of persons didn't realize that I was doing. I was making music where people would carry it home. It oh, was okay. just left in the dance hall. Right. So, for instance, I remember when Red Rat came about, even my distributor at the time wanted to ask me for a record bounty to them. I said, not really, because I can't do it for bounty. I rate bounty, my favorite right. DJ. I can't think of something I can do for making better. That a bounty is this thing that this is my thing. I want to work on my own thing and make it successful. So I started out with Red Rat. Yeah, that's how people see it as a gimmick thing. Mm, but right. for me, to me, me never feel no way bad fun with it. Because people with, have said that. Exactly. It was just my thing. So I, I was unapologetic about it. Mm. When um, Red Rat album came out and Green Steve said to me, it's the biggest selling album of all times. Red, Red Rat. Rat oh, no, it's Red Rat. Yeah, I'm talking bigger than Shaggy. I thought bigger than Gregory Isaacs, Dennis Brown, they were putting out everybody. And that little album. Oh was no, the it's biggest, Red Rat. Oh it's no, the biggest, biggest selling biggest album in Green Sleeves history. history. When they've said that to me, I said, to prove a point. The point was that the music I was making, people are carrying it home. Mm -hmm. Not just for the dance hall. So you have man in the dance hall, you know, you dance to tune them two times. Next, yeah, my thing was something. There's something in there that people could relate fun, to. Fun, man, and, and laughter, man. Same similarly, um, Fudgy with um, Fudge, Goofy. Goofy. That song crossed over. We, Goofy got signed to, to BMG Records. Enough people don't know that. Yeah, man, well. <laughs> no, that's yeah, enough yeah, people yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. that. I mean, on the back of that, and the, the level of response we got out of the UK, I've never seen anything like that in my life. They were treated like pop groups. Like they, when Red Rat and Goofy would go on the road, they'd be, people would see them like pop artists. Girls, they would scream. I had their near death experiences where the marble bus one day wouldn't make, couldn't leave the venue. Oh, yeah? Yeah, man, the crowd literally started rapping. Me talking about big bus, you know, like a little mini bus. Big bus, the crowd started push the bus, had to come off of the bus and go back to find tune. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, man. People wouldn't leave Liverpool it at me. Liverpool? Yeah, man, remember specifically. So, just some little things that we saw happening with our crew. That wouldn't be the same with other crews. Right. And even though we could go into their territory, they couldn't sure. come, they, they weren't, they couldn't come down. Right. I'll tell you something. I remember, you know about Notting Hill Carnival? Yeah, you man, Notting Hill that? Carnival. Yeah, Notting Hill Carnival. We did the BBC stage. No, dance all artists hardly get on them. That's a BBC, is yes. national stage. So we did their stage, we did Kiss FM. And I kid you not. Jay-Z on the show, Busta Rhymes that time, you had like Fire, Fuji's. Them three things there was the top names them at the time. When Rat them done, Redrid, believe me. It was just Red Rat and Goofy. Yeah, I tell you, it wasn't because it's their crowd, you know, can you imagine? Right, right. But these little songs, where we are here out of Jamaica, it's dance hall, but it's not dance hall in the right, usual right. way. Yes. The tempo up a little bit, and them sound kind of popish. Let me tell you, man, when I said the man, they mash up the face of Bridget. I never see anything like this in my life. It was the talk of the town. So the music was designed to transition a little bit further. Mm. And, and so I'm proud to say that, you know, one of the things I've achieved in the business so, is to get a glimpse of the whole transition into part, the John Trump right, right, and right. them whole day, mm -hmm. their thing. And, you know, the great Lenky. Was um, if you know it about Lenky, right, right. yeah, man. Lenky was my wake up, wake up, you know. I'm, the, I'm his mentee in a sense mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because um, well, he was my mentee. I'm the mentor, mentor right? right? Yeah, man. I used to take Lenky around to all the studios with me, you know. Because me, I'm not a keyboard player, but right. I play a keyboard. Play but a key. If you think, oops, me can call I'm, Lenky, you know. So he started to get familiar with the people, man. So. Even just to see how Linky transition and what he has achieved. Greatness again, said, man. Yeah, man. So, you know, and I said, yes. boy. So, Main Street, so we know the early mm. camp was, we said, Red Dragon, Flower Gun, mm. Daddy Lizard, um, General Degree. But then people like Buccaneer, yeah. Arkai, Goofy, mm. Red Rat, Lady G, mm. Chrissy, Chrissy D. D. Mm. Who will for? Well, I'm going to tell you, before you get to even Red Rat, you know, there's a time when it was Richie Stevens. Richie Stevens, yes, Richie yes, Stevens, yes. Junior Tucker, Stitchy, Papa San, 
That was the crew originally, when Main Street crew actually started officially. Yeah. There was those names. Stitchy, right? Stitchy Papa San, San, Tucker, Tucker and Richie, Richie Stevens. Stevens. Yes. Lady G. Lady, I'm going to call Lady G there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was the original. Chrissy D was always there too. Okay. She, that's right. So that was the, the thing there until after that we transition to Red Rat and them guys. Okay. Um, oh. And that was funny because, <laughs> man, we were Stitcher and Sun Clash. Man, that was drama. <laughs> then you know about the Clash, Yeah, right? man, yeah, man. Because everything happened right now in my studio. At you the time. Tell them, they knew everything was going on. But <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was so funny, you know? Mm. Um, that time was a rough time. For me, street. Time. Yeah, man. For me, street, man. It was really Why? weird time. It was uncomfortable. Oh, because are they? Yeah, man. Because everybody running to me, so I get caught in the middle of this now, and you know, it started out in good. It was. It, it started worked. out friendly. Friendly, but some, but you know, instinctively, the them guys said them who own them craft, you know. So what them doing now? When they go out there, man, say something, I press a button. It, instinctively, you respond, and then it just transition into something yes. about, you know. Never like the outcome. Never but like the outcome. Like, no, yeah. never really like how it ended up. And that must have been uncomfortable still. While yeah. fun in some in yes, some regards. I, yeah, I can I can I can understand that as well. So you, Father Danny, <laughs> is responsible for the emergence of some of the real talent. People have become giants and everything too. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Chat them and then redirect them in them own mm. in them own right. Uh, yeah. A giant about the place too. Yeah man, they do. Ox and the whole of the man them, Buccaneer and mm. How is Buccaneer? I have not seen Buccaneer for several years now. I, I can't tell you how, how Buccaneer is doing. Because, um, you know, my transition right, kind of right, took me right. away from that. That is a whole new <laughs> deal right there. So. But um, at the time, the important thing out with these guys uh, that leave, would leave a legacy, for instance, when Buccaneer started the opera thing. Right. You know, he had some... Supremely means, talented youth. Yeah, man. We did things that was outside of the box, you know. You know, as I tell people, you know, I, I, and I don't feel no way about it, because I remember that song named Skettel Country. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a classical song, you know, really so like real classical music, and you know, DJ on it. It was the first, I mean, people were dabbling in it. Right, right, there, right. As you said, people steal it from him. He used to do it, but he used to do it and dance all beat. Mm -hmm. I tell him, said, Remember that time I said, don't worry about it, man. When we drop our one, you're going to stand out. And when we drop that thing, I tell you, man, Jamaica yeah. never good again. <laughs> in, 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 your, in your main street days, I will soon come to the transition. Do you have any recollection of an artist? But the first thing you see the artist, I hear the artist, you know immediately. Say, so yes, it's a star this. Well, not, I'm going to, let me say this, and I'm going to say guardedly because I don't want to disrespect nobody. Right. But the reality for me, the first day, not at Main Street, right. first day I heard Bounty Killer, that was it for me. Yeah, no. I remember I went up the studio and I tell them out there and they said, I said, listen, Bridget, I said, this is Bridget, I said, this is Bridget, I said, eat Bujubanta food, I said, eat Shaba food, because it's a big voice. Right. And I said, like, you know, because when me meet Bounty, you know, I said, you know, you know, you know, and I remember it, less than a month, I see him pull out a cell phone. Them days, a cell phone a big thing. Yeah, so I a cell phone. <laughs> him pull out a cell phone and I say, what? So Jamie called me and I tell him, go on. Mm. The dub play thing start work for him. Because the man has said some things that nobody right was supposed to it. say. Right. He was supposed to say that. I feel like the police now are going to give you a check. Yeah. And the man saying it and the whole of the sound man and gang him. So every day, Jamie is Jamie to say, the man going to the studio for more than I said, going there for half hour and come out to 300,000 and say, oh, no, this is my father. Soon come and gone again. 300,000 them days. And what about money? You don't have man. Fell like you with half hour. Look at you who the bus yet. You mean, say, man. So I saw that and, you know, I started to use that as a base to try getting guys to improve them lyrics. Mm. I said, the start of lyrics is not a nursery rhyme lyrics where we're using right, me right. and B and we and she. No, no, the man. I, I That's said, okay, thing. Yeah, man. I said, you got some as encouraging. You know, read newspaper. You need to know what's happening. You need to be read, man. Yeah, man. You have to be aware because we go out and you doing an interview, for instance. You have to have information. You know, you're not going to go DJ. You're going to share information right, and your knowledge, right, and people right. have to, you know, give them something to go with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we start to encourage them to write different and all them things. There, and you can see it start happening in Main right. Street. 
So both kill a set of standards. So up to this day, to my favorite one. Both here, DJ. Yeah, 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 man, Yeah, DJ. Yeah, DJ. Yeah, DJ. Yeah, Yeah, DJ. Yeah, Yeah, DJ. Yeah, Yeah, DJ. Yeah, DJ. Yeah, 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 in, in, in the main street days when you would have created some because all the rhythms, all, all the songs in main street, you built, created the build, beats. Yeah man, yeah man. Build all the rhythms. Yeah? Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Heavy metal. Heavy metal, every one Scandal. Of them. Scandal. All purpose. Yes man. Filthy. Yeah, you want to know everything yeah man. Filthy. Filthy. <laughs> rich. Rich. Rotten rich. <laughs> all all the beats. Yeah man. So filthy was supposed to be filthy rich with us. He had rich, rotten rich, and so it was called filthy rich. I'm just take out the rotten rich, rich and it's called filthy. filthy. Okay. Yeah, man. So all the beats are, um, yeah. And there are beats leading up to that, you know. But, and this is another thing. During the first, right, after I did um, one at a time to yeah. that era, there's a period of time where I got very busy doing productions for overseas artists. Mm -hmm. So I was, so Main Street had oh, become that, a. That, oh, up B Street had become a, a thing you just know say have it but more right. paying much attention. Oh, okay. Nineteen ninety-six when I say, you know what? Yeah, I'll give it, it some little time. Yeah. And that's the birth of so how Red Rat and, and Goofy, Goofy came mm. in. Goofy was an artist that I had heard, um, cause that by then my studio was, had become my studio everybody right, wanted to do right. it. And I remember one day passing through and just heard heard him him the name Sample at the Sample time. Sample kid. Yeah. In their voicing for Steed and Cleavy. Uh, and I say, who the artist say? Say, I'm a sample. I say, oh, my voice the artist say, you know. I'm a voice him. Because he's like, I like when DJ DJ. Yeah, yeah man. He might have done that. Right. Yeah. So, Goofy was an artist that I'd heard at the time. And say, so, after me meet Goofy and them things, you know, we start. We did the first. Um, oh, Mad and Joe was a part of the camp at one Mad point. Mad and Joe. Yeah, I mean, most man left out, you know, man. Yeah, man too, Chica man. was a part of the yes, camp man. as well. So yes, Chica man. and Mad and Joe. Yeah, man. We don't want to oh, the body, you know. Oh, no, it's not the photo. Yeah, you see, after my transition, mm -hmm. tell the truth, a lot of things, but I don't store them in memory yeah, so I much. I understand. But a part, so a part there, of the you know? journey, yeah, yeah, yeah. part yeah, of the part of the great journey, man. Yeah, but them not on, you know, in random way. Right, up here, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then so many the hard drive somewhere so we can bring it up but <laughs> yeah it's accessible but yeah man they, these guys were part of the journey um even mackerel mackerel yeah man keep rich keep rich right keep, yeah, i know like keep that. rich came just before mm. the transition yeah man taras riley we tell you people don't know them thing you know, junior yep. gang i probably want that first first record junior yeah yeah man he was this damian marley damian Man, 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 right. Put out some people, them some of them things, them for Mill Street label. The Taros Riley had just, that was the, the, the end part of me, and I just before my transition, right. he had Taros, he had a TOK. TOK as well? Yeah, man. So, so, so yeah, so it was TOK, um, Damien, and um, Taros. They were the new, the, like you call the newest additions to the crew at the time. That was how we tried to, you know, create that. Yeah. I think. Which one of those beats gave you the greatest joy when you have, uh, well, while building it or after you build it and you're listening to yourself? Yeah? This is really bad part. <laughs> <laughs> My God. You know, I can't say that. I don't, I don't no. think I have an answer for it. The one that was most unusual and something I did deliberately was um, CM Filter in him. Filter. Because I say, I never say, boof, boof, chip, mm. boof, boof. And one of them say, you know what? More I make a boof, boof, chip, but more I make it different. And, um, and so that's the rhythm, just a, it's just a drum beat and a guitar. Right. You know, so that was why. And one of the things I remember about it, I think this is probably why I probably remember it so much. When I was balancing it to mix it, and mix it like, oh, you know, normally in a studio, as you're done, we balance at a run off. Right, right. It's exactly what I mix that, the whole of the songs. Then. No technical, nothing. No spend the time, uh, EQ up and right. do all kind of thing. Just quick EQ, quick out. thing, turn it up loud, boom, boom, and just sing that, you know, and just enjoy it. You know, mm. I remember the rhythm name Rich because I used my voice to sing the intro. Oh, okay. I, I like the something different. Every right, right, I want right, right. So I use my voice and sing the intro. And just, just the, you know, just how the rhythm was put together mm. was a little different. I think there was a friendly rivalry between Main Street and, and Madhouse at the time. Official or unofficially? Yeah, perception. Because perception. I, all right, I'm going to put in one word. No, people don't know. Yeah. When I just started Main Street, just before the Main Street thing, Dave Kelly and I used to build them up, up, up the same one at a time. Yes? Yeah, man. 
Pia Dave can have bridge in there, but we don't put this way. He's in a different space than me. Right. But he was an engineer at studio. Many of used to link up. So enough to Dave do. He would call me and would put on things on it for him, like voice things. I hey, my voice too for Dave, you know. Dave was the first person with voice, actually voice. voice and, yeah, man, my voice too for Dave. That tune has been released? No. <laughs> <laughs> them days, that's it, them days we are, we are come and right, put things right, together. Right. But one of the things I observed with Dave when I realized that me and him probably couldn't work, mm -hmm. Dave very meticulous. Right. I'm one of the person, I'm, I'm like a musician, we just have fun. We just want to get it down. Dave, if Dave will spend all the hour up and just the kick drum and try EQ it to get the perfect sound. So on, right. Me, I'm not that guy. No, <laughs> I, I'm the guy who want to just play the rhythm, make play it just play. Yeah, and then I'm into. My strong point, I'm into the song, mm -hmm. you know? I've always tried to emphasize the vocals and songs. You know, the song itself first, after right, and then vocally, you know, the ability to get artists to respond the right way, right. to be believable. All these things are things that, you know, I've, the start of things that I've tried to develop in my presentation. Nice. So while they focus on production now, where if it's the production, then everything, the, the drum them sound clear and clean. My thing reckless. <laughs> but the song, <laughs> you can't deny the song. Yeah. So Related it's just about the song. So, so. Yeah. Speaking of, yeah, so one of the rhythm should name Filthy Rich, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In 2019, Nicki Minaj sample Filthy mm -hmm. Rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. You will yeah. get Filthy Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I think this song was I mega wish, charged. I wish, yeah man, yeah man. The, the thing is... Um, you cleared it, you were the one who cleared it. Yeah man, it. I cleared it man, yeah man. That, that's, a, that's a good thing about being, when you reach a certain level in the music industry, you can't stay the same place. Right. I mean, we started out with nothing. You know, obviously over the years, you know, I've, I've done many courses. Yeah. I, I've not stayed yet. As I said, my formal education ended at high school, but I have done many developed them and I've developed myself. So as a businessman, I look, I'm, when it comes to the, especially the music industry, Very that's savvy. where I've, yeah, man. I've learned, I've done, gone through the, all the steps necessary to progress. To get the thing right, man. please. So, yeah, man, so things are in place for me. Mm -hmm. The curtains, the, all the back, um, work being covered. And so when they had to do it, you know, they just came to the source. Yes. In 2017, Chris Brown sampled Tight Up Skirt. Mm -hmm. It's not a sample. It's, it's not, not a sample. sample. No, that's, a, that's the newspaper report. It's not a oh. sample. No, man, they sing, they, he sang it, they sang the line. Oh, he sang they the line, but the they sample it. It was right. a sample, he just sang it. Oh, okay. And so that, that is... I, I can't talk about it, but I still have... It's still a deal with it. Yeah, yeah, man. I yeah. know yeah. it's still a deal with it. Yeah, man. Mm. <laughs> so, so the work, I find, I find new places, man, and new years, man, yeah, I think, man. Yeah, man, and I appreciate that because, you see, what happened, you know, the, the industry has stagnated, I would say. I mean, I, 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 stagnant I, I, is not the word they are you using, see, about. I, I'll work with your word. <laughs> the thing is, let me tell you, what's happening today in our music, um, I don't like to talk about it because people... Get, get, get offended. Get offended and things like that. But while I support the idea that them guys are making some money, which is important. Yeah, for right, that's important. In for community mm -hmm. development. You can bring back to the economy in the, the inner city and things, fine. But I think there needs to be a standard that hmm. people need to appreciate. So what we were presenting back in the day was music that was built out of our culture, what come out of us. Mm -hmm. Music today, if, if the average song coming out nowadays, most of these tracks are made overseas you know, by some people who don't even know who. So I'm going to buy the, the thing that I'm online and exactly. I'm And I would say, dear, say the majority of them are like that. Put it this way further then. You know what I'm saying? The music is not a soul again, sir. It's not our thing. Nothing to do with our culture. All right, mm. reggaeton have more reggae sound than reggae now. Because In reggaeton. my view still. Because, yeah, but reggaeton was birthed out of reggae. Reggae music right. or dance art. Well, right. Yeah, directly. There's no question about that. Mm. What they make you nowadays is straight out of hip-hop. So if they call it trap or whatever, it's the same hip hop, the culture, and then things. So, so you, you can't build a base that is not yours, it's not our foundation. Right. So, adding that to it, which is something we used to do back in the day. Right. Because we made hip hop. We still are retained. No, we don't stay there, we don't camp out there. Right. We're smart enough to try and continue the transition. Touch and go. Yeah, man, you do it because, yeah, you can do it, but then I'm going to tell you whether I'm establishing a new genre. Mm. So, I oppose the idea that the music nowadays is called dancehall. I have an issue with that because. Yeah, as I say, 
we work too hard to set up a genre that is established worldwide for them to take it and call it dancehall and the world still looking and say, oh, what is yeah. As you said, the youth it. them have to make money and, and, and we're good with that, but mm. the soul of the music, yeah, it's, gone, it's, it's not there. It's gone, yeah, it's gone, 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 gone. You have done work, I, 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 I mean, I try, before we reach the transition, you have done work with, with some serious people and some serious part, you know, father, mm, mm. P. Diddy, mm -hmm. Beyonce, mm -hmm. Pitbull, mm -hmm. who else? <laughs> Cross them place there. Um, Right, put this talk, some, studio work. some people have done studio Are work. I build yeah. things and send for them. <laughs> studio work. Yeah, man. All right, all right. So here you are now. As I said, there was a time when I was doing a lot of work. Right, overseas, right, right, right. right. Um, some things with Steely and Cleavy and otherwise, right. right? So the Billy Oceans and Billy Ocean. Yeah, man. There, there are some people. And there's a P D. They worked with him on some production with um, Heavy D at the time. He was the president at MCA. So we're doing a lot of work in that thing there. That again was part of my whole development and exposure because I was seeing production from another perspective. Mm. And so during that period of time now, I started to lend my services to others. So like, when, like for instance, Praga Benz got a deal um, with RCA Records. It was, our, no, Capital. Capital. And I did this album for Capital. Again, the, the amazing thing, I kept saying, you know, people like me, got these opportunities not because of anything that was not necessarily commercial. So mm -hmm. in other words, you had producers in Jamaica that name, them name was much Big, bigger than my name. Right. But in terms of the ability to deliver something at that level, mm -hmm. to uh, deliver something at that level was something that they knew from studio experience. You know, how you can take, uh, like for instance, I'm going to take a up to this day. It scared me. We were doing um, Spanish Harlem, mm. doing it over with um, Benny King. But Benny King's an old man. And I remember fly up to New York and go on the studio and voice this man. But him don't sound like how he used to sound. And me a pressure them. I <laughs> said, me pressure them on the studio. To where the time I see the headline, text man in Benny King heart attack. <laughs> and that me a picture of my mind, you know. Yeah, yeah man. So we had to give up some, some, some of the things like those. Yeah, the experience of record with a Benny King, who is a, a legend. legend. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, them things that move me to, to, you know, to be a, in production with. Uh, at the time when we met P. Diddy, for instance, it wasn't P. Diddy, it was Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy, right. Just a coming was like a, a, a um, what do you call it, an intern. Mm. So, like, if we were orange juice, go buy it for me. <laughs> it's all like a high pitch, but yeah. it was reality. That's he was set up. Yeah, right. that's how the thing set up. So we got that opportunity to add his expertise because he had wisdom, he had new things. So he could help you to grow through them things there. So, you know, and the many artists that we would work with at the time, you know, till I ended up producing Max the Priest because I was, yeah, man, so it was on a, and he's his major companies again. Mm -hmm. He was signed to Virgin. So enough people don't even know them things there that we are doing work behind the scenes, growing behind the scenes, so when we come forward, oh, I think at least there's some commercial value in what we're doing because of that level of exposure. Right. Which, it's, it's, it's sad that nowadays I don't see that. Um, I remixed a song for Beyonce since I've been saved as a Christian, and I'm saying to myself, how come... Them still have come to you? Yeah, it has, it has amazed me because I'm saying, what am, there are so many people, because I was reluctant, you know, because, like, because you know, I, it was my lifestyle, you know, but it was an opportunity. And I'm saying, you know, what I'm to all these young, uh, these producers who have the hype and, you know, and it, it started, it, it, it troubled me. Because all them things make me start to say, what is happening to our music? Because at the time, me not to lie, when I left dance hall, I left it, you know. Me never used to listen to no radio station and them things there, you know. Me lock up. Vibes Cartel was like a, me know, me know, me know, I never knew Vibes, Vibes Cartel. That's all about it was. I never knew who Vibes Cartel was. We I was school committed mm. to my we're not gonna do it, but sorry. <laughs> yeah, because well. I say just really hold, you know, for a I left it. So you know, so my experience in working anything there, Michael Jackson had a group called Brownstone. <laughs> Work with them, nobody don't know them thing there. The Michael Jackson label his personal MJJ records. And I did work with all them people there. Um, Backstreet Boys. No, 
Backstreet, back yeah, Backstreet back Boys. Boys. Me and man remix, but them things are overseas, you know? <laughs> right. They fly up and you do work. So at the time I was doing, you know, doing Great so, things. Doing well for things. <laughs> so well for things. What's that mean? Jamaica is now we have time saying. So as a producer, I was getting a lot of exposure. And that's uh, in way, as I mentioned way before that with mm -hmm. um, in the UK when Bloodfire just got signed. I mean, so the signs were there from them. People realized that there was something right. that I probably could bring to them. But I, in, in, uh, humility, I never felt adequate. But I did the best I could with what mm, you guys allowed yes, to do. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. so, you know, it continued. And the, and the, the, the mark of, of success is when they come back. The mark of su success, success is when, when they, they come back. back. They actually come back and say, OK, let's do it again. So, um, yeah, man. So. A, a, a lot of creators, a lot of persons who aided me at that time. Yes. You know, it was just about talent. And, and thankfully, there was no ego involved in it. He may talk about me and Dave Kelly. Me just, right, I, I right. celebrate people. Right, right. When somebody's successful, that's the greatest thing. You know, I tell artists all the while, I say, me tell you something. So you come to Main Street, one thing I can promise you is a career. A career. I may not be able to give you the biggest song, I mean, I'm going to puff up myself. Right. But when I don't need it, if you don't have a career, it's on you. Because I'm going to tell you everything, I have no ego, I'll tell you every detail of everything that you need to know to be successful in the industry. Nice. If you throw it away, that's on you. Yeah, man. Because me, because remember, I went through it and I never knew a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And as I learned them, I might was to impart it to others because... As it should be. Exactly. Because the industry has to grow. You can't be the same stagnant thing. And the man start because the man rip them off and all them things. You need to understand the industry. So I found that most of my artists transitioned into being producers. Right. That I'm you see, producing from things. You. Yeah, they're producing things because the encouragement Movie. is there to do it. Vegas. You know? well, yeah, enough of the man them for Yeah, two. man. Vegas is a big producer. Richard Stevens. Yeah, yeah. Jim Jig Degree. Buccaneer. <laughs> Buccaneer. Most yeah, of the man are producers yeah, for two. For two, two, two. And they come to, and I give them access to my studio too. He was a studio man, do your thing man. Mm. More, be a more power to you because I want to celebrate them. Are you a youth them man? Yeah man. They never turn <laughs> my back on them. Never. never turn my back on them, Virgin. Yeah. Them well, you know. Yes. Them, Father man. Danny, you mm. were at a stage where I said the same thing to Papa Sonny recently. Mm. <laughs> you had the industry in your hand. Mm. You, as I said, had one of the, the greatest musical collective. You were the helm there at Main Street. Mm -hmm. You were doing studio work with the Wizzo. And I make some money running some parts, running some place. Mm -hmm. And you decided to up and leave that. Mm -hmm. what, what was the reason behind your transition from doing secular stuff to, mm -hmm. to Christianity? Uh, that's, that's easy. It was so simple. Um, doing secular music, you know, first of all, like my mom, as I said, she was the leader of the New Testament mm -hmm. choir. We grew up in church. Literally grew up in church. So there's always a foundation. You know, you go, you grow up, you start some girls, and you start go there. And, you know, your life kind of transitions a little bit. But the values, there's those value system I was in. You know, <clears throat> the Bible said, train up the child in ways you go. Mm -hmm. Never depart. Never depart. I started realizing that I never wanted to play my music I was producing for my children, which was a hypocrisy at the highest level. Mm -hmm. Became a parent. I started to go to church now to support my children going to church because I wanted to give them that foundation. Right. So I did the music from them, started to give them that foundation that I got going to church. And one day I message just preach. That was just for me. <laughs> so in the midst of, so, so me and I just said, no, no, I'm at the pinnacle of my career now. You know? Yes. Everybody wants a piece of me. I mean, mm -hmm. my contracts just tiny, tiny, that line, I'm rich. That thing where you talk about now, where you know, say, <laughs> feel it. <laughs> I had it right on my desk, I had my go so and collect I'm a good. And one day at church, I'm bridging, and this is a miracle within itself. First time I preach you now. Man cannot <laughs> preach to save him life. He's boring, man. <laughs> <laughs> the man preach a message. And the message, then preach a, a scripture, and Jesus, um, Jesus asked, um, the disciples asked Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Mm. And Jesus answered him, just call out youth. And said, so Youth, come here. And you come to him and he say, Unless you change and become like one of them little picnic, you'll never enter the kingdom of God. That was my thing. Because at the time, you know, remember I say, when you, your thing set, you know, you feel like you use all that. Right. He just called out the youth. The youth, the youth, the youth, the youth the say, We are called big man for him, now the rest of the man has come. 
peace can never just come. If you, if you don't do, if you don't become like the single child, you will never, it come like it echo in my mind, never enter the kingdom. I say, but more I go even like, <laughs> from your small that you hear about, that's so, all. Yeah, well, so, I go even. So well, if well, me not humble myself that. like you there. And not even fear. So that was it. So when I heard that <laughs> message, but you heard the miracle behind it. They are you to a preach. First him a preach, he must the head of the worship ministry. Mm -hmm. And he must pray for a bass player. <laughs> you remember saying, yeah, you know, within that matter of a year and a half or so, I was a bass player. The other thing said, I tell you, said, bass is my favorite instrument, and if used to play bass. Mm -hmm. I started playing play bass. bass. So for about 15, 16 years, I played bass at church. So, just so, you know, everything just work out. <laughs> no, <laughs> it may sound a weird, but yeah. it's as simple as that. Because, Every time, you know, the idea of becoming a Christian or anything, it's about getting boring, your, your life boring, and you can't, this and you can't. People don't do this and don't do that. And as I grew, one of the things that I did when I became a Christian, I commit my life and dedicate my life to the breathing the word of God, which is something, as I said, I went off, off, mm, off grid. Yeah, man, totally nobody couldn't find me. Dave Kelly then style. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my thing was committing to know the word of God. I, I wasn't satisfied with what pastor telling me because pastor would say anything. And, and, they, they and, be. you, know, mm -hmm. and you know, church, some church rob people and all them things. There. I say, you know, that man is supposed to come to church and preach something. And I've never heard yeah, that scripture accept before. Accept it as yeah, you know, So I committed my life about three, four years. I read the Bible, read like a book from start to finish, everything, and then study it. So if you call my Bible, say, mark up, mark up, underline anything I don't understand, or anything I stand out in a red, everything else. Start that thing. So I organized myself and I started to grow out of that experience. And I started saying, oh, okay, Jesus is a real thing. It's real. You know? And then miracles me start to happen in my life. People get healed. Literally, people supposed to dead get healed and them things there. Nobody couldn't tell me nothing. It became real. I saw the words of the Bible come off of the page and Manifest. start manifesting my life. Mm. During that period of time, brother, all I can tell you is I never got to in a, so much dark places in my life. Oh, yeah? Yeah, man, I lose everything, you know. What do you mean lose everything? We must say, Bridget, where we tell you how far I reach. Because you remember saying, you know, all right. <laughs> a lot of things happen, you know, right at my right transition, right? I was about to build a brand new studio. studio I right. said, I me have things for sign. When we reach a stage when we realized I couldn't do it again. And we had to sign that dotted line up. I said, but how am I going to do this? I'm not supporting this life no more. So a lot of things are happening. So I did to work on investment, right? Mm. But investment pending. You know what I'm saying? You have right, right. you plan your transition already and put on everything. I went through a stage where I couldn't find money to cut me here. That's how bad it got. A lot of people don't know this. Great. Yeah, man, couldn't find money to cut me here. Me. Yeah, man. So I was earning zero money. I was doing anything at all. I was reading my Bible. People said, I get mad. <laughs> that kind of thing. Because they couldn't believe so I could just cut and clear. So, because um, I remember when I had to go to Main Street artists them and tell them, say, boy, I can't go no more. It was the hardest thing I, I had ever done in my entire life, and up to date. Because you talk about family, you know. Go to the man and say, I can't. You can't. Yeah, man, yes, you read that. They're my youth, they're my, they're my come and them start the life now, you know, and all of a sudden, you just let it go, just so, boop. It was really, really tough for me, that they mash me up. So anyway, having done that and kind of, I, I mean, I don't, want, I don't want to throw nothing out there because right. there, are, there are reasons why money just lack off, all mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I went through years. I had a son just entered college at the time. Just going to college, so you know, college fee, a foreign college, we're talking about, you know. Oh, yeah? So I had to be deal with that. I, I was at it, I'm not going into the details. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I was stone broke at the end of the day. And I remember, right at the same about myself, I said to the Lord, you know, me not nah turn back. So I made a decisive, and this decision was clear as day. Me rather go build a board house up at the gully bank, but seeing God's goodness and seeing the word of God, me I go give it all to you and say, me not turning back. My house, I remember my house and public action, studio, everything, we had lose everything. 
about to, to, to take back every single thing. And the moment I made that declaration before God said, me would rather go live on the gully bank, but not turn back, my life just goes off. Miracles after miracles. Me can't, me can't, it, it, it amazes me to a point where, you know, we can't see how this happened. How the turnaround started to happen. And blessings just start running me down. Since it start running down. Mm, yeah. yeah. Then you started doing now gospel stuff, working with. Yeah, man, that time now. Um, you start using your skills now. For, yeah, because, for okay, when, we, when I made the transition, you know, first of all, church people, them say, them don't want them start out with Satan spy. That's what the church, church was. People. Yeah, man, church people start bonfire up away. The people out of the church, everybody, it was a whole of discouragement. People were mm. saying that like, you can't go to church with dance hall. You have to go do this and have to do that. And I'm saying, but me so confident and full of the Holy Spirit. You now me know say God never sent me to learn classical music. He never give, you know, if you want, if that's what he wanted, he would have prepared me for right. it. Right. You know? Yeah, I don't play North American music. I was discouraged people say, Jamaican producers and artists, forget about trying to do foreign production. It don't work. You understand me? I say, don't, it may sound good to you, but it's just like when foreigners try to play dance, dance and do it sound like rubbish, right, right. or reggae, it sound like rubbish. Same as it sounds to them. Mm -hmm. And because I had the experience of going to the studio and actually see how them do it, realize it's not just a musician thing, it's a culture thing. You have to just understand it. You either it or not. I show that. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So, that's what church was doing. So you had the, 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 the typical church thing, traditional church, doing music, where they might try to make some foreign sound in something. And me as a professional musician said, well, that sounds so. The guitar want tune. The person that not sing the right note, but Jamaican people said, so they're up in the ear. And me said, no. But I said, what I was expert in is dance hall. Mm -hmm. Me know dance hall. And they had some of the youth now in the church. Well, I want to hide and lick because they're free to make them parents yet or them pastor. And why, why I was so anointed and bold? We said, no man, this is what God gave me and make her utilize it. And we started the whole Main Street thing, Main Street Gospel. Main Street Gospel. And trust me, in the midst of everybody saying no, it was just yes all the way. When prodigal drop on the road, it never, never pretty, man. <laughs> it ain't never pretty. Everybody embraced the youth. The man thing shot Chevelle Franklin when she transitioned. We start go and start, you know, the Joy album, mm -hmm. amazing album, you know, just how the whole thing started to happen. But that wasn't even the root of the, the, the resurgence, you know, that was part of part it. Part of it. But what I found happening, for instance, I'll tell you, at the low, my lowest point, when boy, I'm, as I said, couldn't find money to come here, and people are, one day, one day, my mom got church, you know, and a, a, a girl looked at me, a girl from the worship team said, Daddy, you here, look, so man, you can't go cut here. I'm water, I said, I can't go. But, <laughs> me, you see, the thing is that people, see, how people see me, right. they wouldn't know, and they wouldn't believe me anyway, so it never makes sense. Mm. But I saw where, I remember my daughter had a daughter just born and wanted to go to hospital, wanted to go to doctor, sorry. Never had money to carry a doctor. And in fear, I, I got up. I went to the, the doctor. Oh, me the doctor said, I said, no charge. No, this was, this first me start seeing miracles now, because yeah. I don't know this doctor, you know. The man I said, when we got the lady, they said, no charge. And I said, well, this, you know, this blew me over. Because that things just start to happen um, out of the blue. Somebody come to me one day. I said, hey, Danny, me have sang a play in England. Me, no, say, me hear that song already, you know. And I said, yeah, we sang that. And he said, you can go up on BBC for the thing there. You, like, you must hear the song, man. It plays so often. And you play the song. The song enter the pop chart and number seven. Remember clearly, because a Madonna song they enter the chart, and Whitney Houston. I always love it when our big song, they enter at the same time, and we entered above it. It's a song I'm right years ago. Forget about the song. I'd done it for UB party. They, they party. started a production. It wasn't their song, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lady J and Chrissy did the, the song. song. But nobody, Jamaica don't even know this. This song mash up the UK. But this is like, I did that done that song for like 1995. Mm -hmm. And this was now 2004 or 5. And this song just turned up and just bomb in the pop chart. So you understand my life to so start turning around. Yes. Then we say, 
heads I re-enter the pop, the pop chart. It's like my whole life. So originally when these things start happening, you know, I mess up to myself, well then I try to draw my back. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then again the word I got, you know. Me not give him no glory because mm -hmm. guess what happened? It's not anything that I had to go. I never did anything. Right. It's not like some out there, look it. It just started running me down. And I'm saying, why these things just start happening? Just so many things just happen, just so for me so I need. You know? And it just started, and so that's where I saw, you know, I see midst of all of that, I'm seeing people being healed out of prayer. Leah yes. and somebody and pray for them. I mean, I uh, you know what I call names of the cancer. I mean, people, man, have cancer in America, and American hospitals send him home. Send him home, then can't do nothing for him for dead. And, <laughs> I was thinking, and I realized realize when I pray something, time tears come to me, I saw my eyes up. I mean, if you still man, face up back, gone, cancer yeah. gone, and you know, these sort of things started to minister to me, and I realized, you know, this is not a joke thing. Let me ask you a question, though, Father Danny, because I'm here, you know, mm. how was it that you got to a point, though, where financi financially it was so bad? No, 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 royalties and publishing from all of this stuff from, from blood fire possibly has mm. come right through Main mm. Street. What, 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 mm. what did happen to that? Alright, so that's why I'm saying no. So <laughs> that's the sort of things you can't you say. say. Right. But put this way, almost most things locked off. I, and it seemed deliberate to me at the time. I don't want to kind of accuse anybody. Mm. But it just everything just locked off. Just so boop. Like so I'll turn off a pipe. And I'm saying, you know, and I think it was probably out of possibly fear that um, they probably wouldn't get the success out of me, so them guarding what was there. Okay, okay. I, okay. I just at the time I, it confused me, but I wasn't paying it in my mind. Okay. That's the next thing you know. Me can't understand what I understand what say. Me totally into my God, mm. me into my Bible. Things happening around me and I, it never mattered to me. It's like me just never care. Because that's focus by what me are focused on. But you see it happening and you know, you can go court and everything, but that wasn't a right. modus operandi. So that happened. And we got through that, um, and we survived it and see how God turned around where nobody couldn't think. I mean, it's just some, it's some miracles happen, man. Bridget, I'm, maybe one day a man just called me and say, you know, have some money for you, you know. And <laughs> I say, I wonder mean, if we can get the mortgage out of the, 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 the thing there now. And <laughs> what happened? It's all unbelievable. It's all unbelievable. But you know, how I know this, I'm going to tell you how I know them things is straight, God. Every time I'd get something to rescue me, it was the exact amount that I needed. Oh, yeah? When we say exact, it, it fit like a glove. And I'm saying this can't be just random by chance. This is mm. not something God doing. So it, again, helped me now for settling my own mind where I am as a man of God and what Conviction I need. Conviction got stronger. Yeah, man. Totally, totally convicted. Mm. And, you know, just the, the, the whole, how I saw him, the artist them that came to me as Ghetto art, ghetto artist right, right. In, within the church. And see, when I saw when I started to buy a house, you know, and them things, I said, wow, you know, God is amazing. Because these are people who could have been doing secular music. Right, you know, yes, you know. like Nicholas and Prodigal yeah, and exactly. the whole man, them can go DJ for real, in a real life. Exactly, and you see people start trying to say, like, start, start, the yeah, man. man. And you say, no, man, this is not normal, something. So you start to see, you start going that space and I realize, and the best thing of it all, men have the baggage. They look over the shoulder type of thing, you count a student in the nights, you have to wonder who outside eh? you know, you, you have to be careful when you go outside, who and who, which and which artists are war, who may, you know? So it, that whole lifestyle, you were at peace. I was at peace, that's it, the peace, and the, the Bible says the peace that surpasses your understanding. Understand <laughs> that these things became real in my life. Yeah. You know, we just, and we just start living and say, oh, thank you, Lord. All good. Oh, you, you, you became a Christian in 1998? I got saved in 1998. I got baptized in 1999. 99. I got baptized. In 99. Yeah, man. Because it took me, again, I was one of the people who just get up and just got baptized because mm. they said, why? I had to go to the Bible. We had to go through it and see. It is this, yeah, man, come on. If it's like a traditional man, just pick up and we have no basis, but church people say, I must need to do it. No, mm. I'm not that guy. Was there, I want to see it in the world. Yeah, was there any time along the, the, the transition and, and the dark days that you felt like, this is not for me, and may I go back what I did there? 
To make some money? Um, many times. Many times. Many times, yeah, man. Um, the, the thing is, you see, I started music, as I said, from 1981, let's say, mm -hmm. 81. I started, I, pre -pro I, was, I became a professional. That means, when doing school, you know, me a double. Right. But, you know, I became a professional. And I, I, it was like 20 years of grooming in a particular area. And I'm now expert in this area. Because simply taking it, it's about 50 years now, I'm in the music right, business. Right, right. Right? So at that point, say, about 20 years, think that this is what I knew. You understand? So by default, if I have a thing that I know who to call, right, right, I know right. the numbers to call, I know the artists them to call if I want to rescue, because I call any artist in Jamaica. I say, Bridget, I beg you. Uh, right. You know? And it chose not to. We won't do it every time I think it. Because even right now, sometimes I think to go back in secular music, not because, well, not out of desperation, right. <laughs> but because me, me love dance, I can't, we can't help it. Because I was going to ask you if you don't if, if you miss it sometimes. I love dancehall music. Mm. I love dancing. People don't know that. I have two but, left foot. Yeah. But I love dancing. But dancehall dance. doesn't have to be lewd and crude. Don't have to Positive be. Positive songs can come out of but, the thing. But here's the reality now. And this is what happens to me every time. So, you know, me and Mr. G right. still link and, you know. Right, right. So, certain people, we still have that little link to degree. And we talk sometimes and come up here with reason. But I realized a lot of things that I want to say to them is against my principles. Mm. So if you're writing a song, I'm into the songs. Right. Me no say, if you make that song the success, you have, you have to, to say, say this. Things. Yeah, because this is where the world is at. No, you mm. can try to hide it like back yes. in the day. You know, where the song like, Pianist and Pianist. them songs. No ideas, you have Plain to just, word. You you have have just to, say it. You have to say it. That's what the world is at. I'm not going to support it. Mm. So I become, a, a, you know, what you call it, you know, I become part of the, the, the challenge to them. Because I'm not going to tell them. I know right, so, right. I have to tell them that. So I realize I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of just leave it alone. Every time I try, you know, because I remember the song because love songs and whatever. You know, sometimes I think about it. Yeah. I step out I say, oops. You know, so I don't really think more about that thing. The music could then do well with, with, with the expertise and experience and knowledge that Danny Brownie has garnered over the years, though. But convince myself of that, too, you know. That's part of the thing, you know, because I was something in the music now. Mm -hmm. just, in my mind, my feet are days away to help it. So, yeah. so what I've tried to do is to rally some of the man them. When I say, Bridget, do something, man, please. But nobody not, not, not bite it. No, the bullet. No, everybody else. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. It's like they're afraid. I must say no. Because I use my example. I said just like me when I was doing what I was doing. Even my distributor, Green Steve, didn't want what I was giving them. You know. Hey, when I give them heads, I them no want. It's me release heads I from Jamaica. You know. That's how yeah, heads I became. Like, yeah, man. I had to release it. Physical press the records in Jamaica. So when they say shut the Jamaica, it shut and reach no more. But you, but they think they push it over. So them call back on. So, so pretty, same thing, Red Rat and them, they didn't want that. They wanted Bounty and Beanie and them things there. They just wanted the proven. Right. And I said, I'm not that guy. If that's why you look at it, I say, listen, unless I can do something for somebody, I'm not that person. You know, you know I pride myself in the fact that, I'm, you know, so I don't call artists for voice for me. So I'm probably a degree is the only one. I'm at a fact, he asked me to voice it. Mm -hmm. I've never reached out and called art, an artist and say, Bridget, don't go voice a song for me. Never. In my career, the one, no, that's not true. The one guy is a youth named Jalil, that's a boss out now. Oh, okay. A couple of years ago, but he was a gospel artist. I met him and as, a, okay. as a gospel artist. And actually, look for him and call him. Mm. But beyond that, every mm. artist, them always come to me. You know? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, so it's, it's one of them things. So I'm kind of a little Dry bit. Dry PC, fireball, that's what I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Like, yeah, fireball. <laughs> So you miss it sometimes? I miss it, yeah, man, because... I, I mean, appreciate the honesty in that, because some man, you know, me the word of God, and, you know, I mm. appreciate the honesty. Yeah, man, you have to keep it real, brethren. You, know, you see, the thing is, you know, people who understand, it's the church thing. It's not the church where we, we grew up and seen Catholic church, and as the church. Mm -hmm. But Catholic, we are afraid to say it, but I'm going to say it. We don't recognize Catholic church as church. Mm -hmm. Me as an evangelical, because... They don't live by them, live by their own traditions. Right. So they do things. But because they dress up in the color and them things, sorry, dress up in the color and them things, we see that as whole church. But I saw me go to church. So you go to church? Yeah, man. See, I'm going to look now. That's why I'm church. My pastor is Junior Tucker. 
No, people don't know that Junior Tucker my pastor. And, hey. and uh, yeah, and you see, <laughs> people don't understand. He went to leave work, he left Jamaica just before. Yeah, not so long after him thing there. When he left Jamaica and he go up and he do Bible school and he go through all that and he passed in the USA and he did everything. He's a, a dean preacher, the man anointed bad. No, you one, no one for him talk for himself one of them there. Uh, no, no, no man can't get him to go, man. <laughs> no man here speak because we are a different generation. <laughs> we keep it real. He's already really still, so we don't go out of here. No man, you good, man. You don't remember, man. You don't remember. Yeah, you don't remember. You don't remember, man. You don't call him, man. But you say, I say we keep it real, you know. Right. We're not, really, we're not, we're not religious. We don't practice religion. We have a relationship with God. Mm. And I say, me prove it to myself, so I have proof not to anybody. Right. But let's go through. Mm. Mm. Not saying we're perfect enough because yes. we are humans. You know, sometimes you see somebody as a fractal part they look to. We are Christian, but we are some. Fractal you know. look part, man. See? No, but I'm saying the difference is. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. But it's how you process it, right, you understand right, what I'm saying? Right. But I'm just saying, don't take the second look. Don't take just, the second that's look. That's a good practice. If you take the second look, you're in trouble. Yeah, you're trying to get caught. So, just the thing they have, just guard yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, man, dance hall, me tell you, I love dance hall without apology. Me tell them, man, me just love dance hall. You know, if you listen, all right, I'm going to give you an example. It's my music collection. I'm into all forms of music, right? Mm -hmm. I like, you know, soft jazz and them things there, and certain type of pop music. Usually, them very soft and nice and mild. But when it comes to me and one go out, no, I love dance hall, I love dance music in general. Mm -hmm. Because I say, I just love dance, you know? My wife says sometimes I have a worm because when I try to beat come out, I just start moving. I can't help it. You know? So, I apologize. I love dance hall. I don't love what's going on now. So many songs are nice. Yeah, man, it's a good song still, I make it. But. Watch your bones. Mad. You have added doing. Well, you mentioned that you used to write ads in the past, but since the transition, you have. Done a lot of advertisements and jingles and yeah. those stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, man. Um, this is something and that. Advice to others. Yeah, man. I add my voice to it, man. So, enough time here. Courts bringing value home. <laughs> <laughs> so, what means over time, because that had started from in the 80s. Right, right. From the As 80s, I, I, saw, yeah, man, I saw some ad with a big company called Grimax Advertising Agency. So, you know, from J Jamaica National, from the early days of Jamaica National, um, one of the biggest campaigns I remember doing was um, Dragon Stout. Dragon Stout. Maximum Satisfaction. From back in the day, you know, by the day. No, 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 that's it. So. <laughs> so, so, we saw a lot of ads, and then, you know, it had become, when I started to go out and mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't able to do it anymore. Right, right. But right. recently, again, I tell about provision because so recently, again, you know, got back into it. By just by happenstance, just you know, and yeah, so I spend most of my days that's what I do, yeah, yeah, man, creating ads and jingles and them things. Uh, I do a lot of that, and still doing the gospel part of the thing as well, yeah, man. Um, with the gospel thing, though, I must admit, um, Jamaica has gone through a transition where all of my artists, them that I worked with in gospel, everybody migrate, mm. just I just saw everybody gone overseas, um. Unfortunately, I, I'm going to get beaten for this, but I have to say it. Uh, the, the new crop of artists that are coming up, I mean, you have Kevin Downswell and, right. and, um, and Jeremy and Edwards, these guys, great. They're kind of from my time, too, but the new set, I don't know. I don't know, if, they, I don't know if they're committed to, to them work with God or them trying to build careers. Oh, okay. Because you can't, it's, I, I, I put this out there in case you can help somebody. But the reality is this the church will not embrace the things that are current. Like for instance, the trap dancer. Right. That's the current thing. Church don't necessarily embrace it like that, you know. You have to you have to, you have to be smart. You know? If you go there so them don't hear it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it sounds exactly like what they're hearing on the radio. Right. And then defense up against up that. against it. Yeah. So you have to find a way for find a, a balance. Make it more contemporary. You know? Don't try sound like vibes cartel. You know. Make sure your voice is clear and people can hear you, and you use proper doctrine. Because mm. these youth, I find a lot of them come to me nowadays. Everybody want to kick Satan in the face, and the Bible totally against that. 
<laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So you, you know, them just them just bold and them youthful exuberance, but them want to, you know, actively do things where we basically against scripture. Mm. Tell people what love. Take paint a picture of what heaven could be like. You tell somebody, you know, how for farm and you you get a paradigm shift. You know, tell them things that can encourage them to a future that's brighter. Yeah. But you don't fight off Satan. Who oh, that help anybody? Because you cannot fight Satan, you're not going. <laughs> you have to you, fight it, you have to know yourself. Better if you get yourself yeah. grounded and teach people. So when prodigal and these guys, you know, and Papa San, you know them songs, people want to sing along. Right, I, wish, right. I wish somebody soul with a catch a fire and turn the place. Jesus bigger than what people say. You're celebrating Christ, you know. But we are trying to tell Satan, so we see it and I come down my yard, me kick you down and you come on man. What are we are that not tell me nobody? You sing to Satan, <laughs> I'm your serenade. <laughs> yeah. So you try so what I found, I can't find I really can't find artists these days. Somebody and, gonna show up one of them time, man. Somebody and, always shows up. But the unfortunate thing though, and I'm gonna put this out there again, because of that, you know, me call the colonial residue. <laughs> Where I saw we get it, they were parrot and right, monkey. Right, right, I saw right, we get, get it. it. Them love the foreign thing. So it's is, it is one of the two Colonial extreme. Colonial residue. Yeah, man. The, the whole thing is that them, you get it from Europe, so. And so, so you want to so sing like you sing opera, or you want to sing like North Americans. Mm. And I can't, I don't know, I don't produce that music there. Right. Me want people who real, yeah, Jamaican, come to me, me and yeah, yeah, keep your yeah, man. We yeah. talk to our people. For the people out there who don't know to get in touch with you for, the, for advertisements and jingles and vice versa, and production, because you're still doing that, the mm. young, talented gospel people, mm. how they go about finding you, though? Well, I'm, I can be found on social media. I mean, just put my name. Just mm. put my name out there. I'm, I don't have any, any particular... I'm not trying to gain clients. I'm not right. trying okay, to... Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not you know, out there actively pursuing right, anything right, right, right now. Right. You know, at but, my age. But you're out now the socials. I'm on social media, I hardly act, I'm not very active on it, but mm. I know so I get likes. <laughs> I have a, I have a YouTube channel, Main Street Videos. Yeah, plus um, the Instagram page, I was mm -hmm. over the Instagram page and I did a little research and certain right. say anything will pop up, you know what I'm saying? Right, and I had learned it, but uh, I have followers, I have some followers, I'm yeah, say yeah, it's generic, I don't know who. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate it, you yes, know? Yes, yes. Because they have something to say, yes. you know, at least I can communicate with some people. We spoke about your brothers and mm. you and, 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 and what you have done and contributed to the music. Mm. Like, for the past 30, 40 years, most things that have come out of Jamaica music wise, one of you involved in it somewhere yeah. along the line. That's true. The music is, is passing down. Nicholas, mm. the son, mm. Lifeline Records, mm -hmm. <laughs> he has well. been doing well because Rich in Love and a couple of songs with Romaine and Assassin, and he has been because I kind of know a few little mm. things because yeah. Assassin. I want to be DJ, so when I do things, you know, like I look on the credits and stuff. You know, it's my favorite, you know, you know what You understand? So he has been doing yeah, man. great things and a ch chant his own course as well. Yeah, man. Um, and I'm so proud of him because um, it's good to see that it, it continues, the journey continues. It was not in vain. Mm. Um, he saw it fit to pursue the same things that I did. When I see him doing things, I say, wow, just like me. You know, chip off the whole block. <laughs> um, uh, you know, she was more into the music, like, you know. Right. But I think he's doing the right thing, and that's where I kind of somehow, you know, I always beat myself for it, not being so part of the business, business of right. music. Right. You know, I'm, I'm the creative guy. Mm. I, I, I put it this way, that's not true. I do the business, but the creativity is where I, I feel like. That's my calling. That's your comfort zone. If I could just go and create music and have to think about the business mm. and somebody do the business, that Come would like be me great and for me. Come like me teaching. Go and go teach me you with them. But the rest of it, secretarial administrative. Yeah. I don't mean, find that something. That's, you that's understand? It. That is where the thing is. But go teach you with them. We yeah, love that part of it. Yeah, man. So, so Nick, yeah, man, he has been doing very well. I, I see him on tour. And when you see him out there, he just bring back memories. Mm. And, you know, and I'll just pick him up and we keep, you know, keep that link. At all times, you know, as big when he do something, you know. Right. Like him, the last song, right? Him, the 100 million. Um, we yeah, found a good man. Still, but you know, yeah, man. You know, some yeah, of the stuff. Song, everybody knows that song, man. The, the Romain Virgo new song, man. Mm -hmm. I feel like I want 100 million. Oh, okay. <laughs> I found a good man. Yeah. Yeah, probably not get round to it. You know what I mean? You can get to me now. You want to reach it? Well, we'll get to it. But the dance hall, you know, 
some part of it is not for me. Yeah. That is just the truth. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to point out something to you. I've said this to some persons and them, them get it's like eye opening to them. With the, in the midst of all of these trap songs that I'm talking about, if you notice every year, the big song them for every year is always a dance hall, dance. original dance hall song from Toast. To um, when in my dream, mm. the, the whole of these songs, the, the, yeah, man, in Buju come with um, trust and them mm. songs. Then. It come and it's over. It 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 obvious that there's this remnant, and people want it, but we're not getting enough of it. So when people put out songs like those, Jump on, they on. are the songs that become the biggest songs them for the year. In the midst of all the things, so here is a trap thing. It's just a fad. It's right. like a fad. As we said, the youth, they make their money and thing, but some of it's food. just not for me. I guess probably me, I get all. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But <laughs> this is the same thing with this Vermin Virgo song. Like right. I'm saying, it's one of them songs that dance. Right. But song. probably just like it run to rub you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, we do so many things, and you know, sometimes when I get fermented things still. But it's good to say, Nick, take up the thing. Yes. And I try to do the thing. The right way, yeah, man. man. And my other son, um, Juvian, he's into, um, well, he does a lot of websites. Okay, cool, things. cool, cool. He actually, he started producing too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but he, when he went to college, he got into the thing, okay. web development web thing. and design and stuff. And he's excellent at it, you know? Mm. He's doing a lot of in corporate things. And he's nice. He's close to the music. Same, still yeah. close to the music. Yeah, man. So Father Brownie is okay. He's blessed. Father Brownie. I can't be ungrateful. Mm. I'm a very grateful person because, you know, as I say, the provisions coming from the various places where sometimes you, you don't know, you know? Unlike a man who works in a bank who knows, he can know, so boy, every month he might get extra. Right, right. My thing is just by faith. I live by faith each day because I'm not actively pursuing the music industry either. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, say every day is another blessing. I mean, just appreciate it and say, God, you're good. Yes. You know, and so. And you'd, you'd have take, sorry to cut it, you'd have taken steps now to fix some of those issues that would have let, where the transition is, some things that didn't flow anymore. Mm. So the, the business part of the thing, the publishing and royalties, yeah, man. them things are in place now. So All though, those things are in place. Right, so we, you're not, you're, you'd have to clear them, Nikki and them. Yeah, man, it's all like things in place, man. Yeah, man, no things have been in place, man. Mm. I've, had to, I've had to do that. I mean, it has always been in place. That era of my life has always been one of them that somewhat stable. Right. But, um, in terms of my songwriting and them things. Right. Um, it's something that this is the only thing I've said, but I want to start pursuing it again. Sometimes, me and consider start building some rhythm and send to some people and say, yo, check some rhythm and just put some it's sensible song on it. Because if you're going to say anything, well, disrespect my thing, then right, you, you right, can't work right. with you. You know? So these are some of the things that, you know, and I know I'm covered with, with that area, you know? But you um, put in the work in a father, Danny, so you have to earn from it, you know? And yeah, man. Thing, definitely, and, and, definitely. And, and, and the grandkids and great grandkids who come say to them, them great grandfather and grandfather. A legend yeah, of the things, sir. Yeah, man. Like when, of, I, when I keep that as a secret. One of the things I've been been involved in over the, the last couple of years, and if you hear about Jamaica Music Society, right, jams, right, right. Yeah, I've been the chairman of Jams from inception. Oh yeah. Of people don't know that. No, from, I mean, never know that. Yeah, man. I was approached some years ago by the IFPI, mm -hmm. which is the international body. And they wanted to have a, a, a body set up in Jamaica. Oh. And so we put together a, a thing there, a team of directors, and I was elected um, chairman. And under my chairmanship, I've seen the change, a transition in Jamaican music, because we have a voice now. Right, and we right. have a government, even we, as it pertains to the copyright amendments that, uh, that took place a few years ago, mm -hmm. and the extension. And that There's been a transition in our music and the way we represent now. So it has taken our music to a higher level. So a lot of artists are now benefiting from that. So you're still affecting artists. the music in a positive way for other than the man. That's always been my goal. You know, that's always been my goal. As I say, I don't, I can't say I've gotten it right all the time. But once I make a mistake, I try, I have to fix Correct. it. I have to fix it for the next generation. Mm. Because I must, they must. I love the industry, I love my country, I love Jamaica. I'm pro Jamaica in every single step of the way. So, I'm, you know, means where me and foreign can't compare to Jamaica for me. Nice, man. So, yeah, man. So, jams. Jacob and these organizations, we need to still embrace it and true, you true, know, true, and true. see the growth continue from it. Yeah, Father Danny, mm -hmm. you have done it, man. I've done <laughs> you have that, done man. it. <laughs> you are still doing it for a level. Yes. You understand, in your way now. And, 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 thing, and, and we appreciate the man's contribution to the music. Like I say, 
I, I knew some things coming in, but mm. this has been more than enlightening. So a lot of the things I say is not in the literature yes. and thing, but I have it for me. I have it for me. I, have it for me, I have it for me. I down. But I appreciate the man's greatness, man. And give thanks for the you opportunity understand? to share. Yeah. It's a joy, man. No, man, it's a joy. Man. <laughs> Remember, I said, it didn't feel up before, no one. Mm. It never happened, man, them yeah, things yeah. at the right time, in man, and thing and thing. So, as I said, you would have done exceptionally well for you and, and yourself and your family and, mm. and the music, the music that I love. Yeah, yeah. You understand me? I said, because a man mm. like you, why me can do me, I do know. Because you were building up for the artists when we are interviewing. You, know? you understand yeah, what I say? Yeah, well, so I appreciate though. that, man. And, and, and keeping the Brownie name alive and well, man. <laughs> what a great family of brothers. Uh, Yo. <laughs> Again, uh, glory to God, brother. Yeah, man. Nothing to do with me. <laughs> we just could say, I'll be able to give thanks, brother. It's a joy, man. Yeah, man. It's a joy. I said, the man looking young and fresh and blessed, sir. <laughs> Right, God again. And then the brownie, a big man from your boy. You know? I'm a big man. Now. That'll be up so rich. Hello, yes, big man. And so just keep doing the thing and, and whatever you can do to, to, to influence the music where me and you love. Because yes. me know you love dance all just yes. like me. And probably more than me. Yes, yes. You understand? Yes, me know it's not necessarily right now, but whatever yes. you can do for it. You know? Definitely. Keep definitely. the thing on a level. Me appreciate it. I mean, know thousands of people appreciate that. Because the music. You want some healing, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. You have Leon span it, man. And yeah, man. It, 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 it. And, and nothing against you with them, the man mm. do them thing, but no soul none of the thing again. Yeah. Cutting the candy music, the man, the man, not no last. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, man. We put out several seminars as jams to you know, invite them, and usually the ones who I need here don't show up. That's the, that's the weird thing yeah, about it. Yeah, the choir. choir. And they say music free because they, they can they can make a difference, you know, but they just don't have the information and then they don't seem to want it. But I you them. When so. you keep them things still, mm. just pass on the info and I'll pass it on to to cause sometimes the messenger is is is, is yes. message reach particular places yes. through the True. messenger. Yeah, that's right. I'm willing to share the info because we need it. Like yes. me see it, but we, we, we know me know the music even though I'm relatively young, doing this we know where the music I come from. Mm. Relatively young in terms of the music, man. Nobody look at me there, you see? Me know where it come from, and versus where it come from to where it, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's happening, man. I don't know, I feel it, but it is what it is, also. Go ahead yeah, to the TV, yeah, yeah. A positive yeah, reality, yeah. but yes, the man, yeah. we have good music, and then we embrace and, yeah, and highlight and them something. Yeah, something. Man, Father things, Danny, man. all day. <laughs> you have to go back here. <laughs> it's a joy, boss. Yeah, man. It's a joy. And... Um, Father Cleveland mm. and Father Junior talk. I mean, I appreciate it. Consider it done. Consider it done. It's a job. Yeah, man. I'm big up on yourself. You know. Teach them. So, I'm trying to make sure a message reaches. You, you, know? you, 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 you take from my bridge. I'll write me a chair right now. Yeah. Just bash up my bridge. Sorry about that, sir. Sorry about that. You know, yeah, man. I, I hear a DJ set that, you know. A, yeah. a, a killer with DJ, man. Yeah. DJ, make sure the message reaches. DJ, yeah, yeah, man. man. <laughs> killer. See the thing from early and, 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 and see the potential. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, it's like my father. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, man, I mutual respect and love, man. So we're not trying to preach, no, 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 but. No, no. Yeah, well, that's the crime. You know, you know. But pick up yourself, yeah, man. Yeah, man, bless up, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Teach them. Hey, yo, hello. Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!